Can you hear me? And welcome to the Eagles Nest here for tonight, senior night for the, your Holy Savior Menard Eagles. You're going to see the first one walking down is uh, Nate Bilbo. Nate is escorted by his parents, Brent and Debbie Bilbo. He has been a member of the National Honor Society all four years at high, of high school, as well as an honor roll student for four years while in honors dual enrollment. He has earned awards from Louisiana High School Rally Association for algebra in 2022, academic class awards in algebra and advanced math. Nate was has been has played for the Menard Eagles baseball team from ninth to twelfth grade, with an honorable mention in 2023. He will be attending Louisiana State University, majoring in pre-med next year. Nate Bilbo. And your next senior is number one, Case Butterfield. Case is escorted by his parents, Kristen and Kate and Eddie Butterfield. He is a member of the National Honor Society and International Culture Club. He has maintained an AB honor roll all throughout high school. Case has played on the Menard Eagles baseball team since his sophomore year and has earned first team all district for an outfield as well as Brent, the Brent Matthews Award. Case is committed to play baseball next year for Southern Arkansas University Tech and will be majoring in business. Number one, Case Butterfield. And your next senior, number 27, James Francis Curley, the third. Trey is escorted by his parents, Randy and Annette Curley. He is a member of the Beta Club, the Key Club, International Culture Club, as well as elected to prom court. Trey has played in the Menard Eagles baseball team in junior high, as well as ninth through 12th grade. He was also an honorable mention for the 2023 District 4 2A All District. He will be attending Louisiana State University in the fall, majoring in construction management. Number 27, James Francis Curley III. And your next senior, number 15, Jay Guillory. Jay is escorted by his parents, Josh and Kristen Guillory. As a three-sport athlete, he has played for the Holy Savior Menard soccer team, where he competed in a state championship in 2003, as well as on track and field team, where he ran for the state finals. Jay has played for the Menard Eagles baseball team from 9th to 12th, where they were district champions and state runner-ups in 2023. Jay will be attending the University of Louisiana Lafayette in the fall. Number 15, Jay Guillory. All right, your next senior is number eight, Michael Henry. Mike is escorted by his parents, Mike and Lee Henry. He is a member of the Holy Savior Menard MAC team, as well as the National Honor Society. Mike has played for the HSM football team as a starting quarterback, as well as for the Menard Eagles baseball team since he was a since his sophomore year. He's earned second team all district as a sophomore, as well as all parish and honorable mention all district as a junior. He is committed to Louisiana Christian University to play football in the fall. Number eight, Mike Henry. And your next senior is number 21, Gavin Hilton. Gavin is escorted by his parents, Dale and Brooks Morrow. He has maintained an AB honor roll all throughout high school. He has played for the HSM football team where he received honorable mention wide receiver award as well as first team all district in offense and defense. He was awarded defensive player of the year and an all state honorable mention. 
He has played for the Menard Eagles baseball team from 9th to 12th grade, where he earned second team all district for second base. Gavin will be attending the University of Louisiana Lafayette, where he will be majoring in kinesiology to become a chiropractor. Number 21, Gavin Hilton. And your next senior will be number 30, Drew Knapp. Drew is escorted by his parents, John and Stephanie Knapp. He has played for the Holy Rollers, HSM Eagles basketball team, as well as playing for the Minority Eagles baseball team throughout his high school. Number 30, Drew Knapp. Number 18, Cohen LaRue. Cohen is escorted by his parents, Waylon and Brandy LaRue. He has maintained the AB honor roll and was given the Soaring Eagle Award with an ACT score of 31. He's a member of the chess club. He is a president, uh, he's a member of chess club as a president, international culture club, student council. He has played for the Menard Eagles baseball team from ninth through 12th grade, where he earned second team all district in pitching and the 2022 Baseball Coaches Award. He is committed to play baseball for Centenary College of Louisiana and has also received a scholarship of excellence. Number 18, Cohen LaRue. Cody is escorted by his parents, Jimmy and Tracy Lyons. He is a member of the HSM MAC team, chess club, international culture club, as well as the key club at Menard. Cody has played for the HSM football team, the Holy Rollers, and Menard Eagles baseball team from ninth to 12th grade. In baseball, where he earned second team all district, as well as the Christian Leadership Award in 2023. Cody plans to attend the University of Louisiana Lafayette to major in finance. Number six, Cody Lyons. Number 10, Carter Mar Paul Markintel. Carter is escorted by his parents, Robbie and Carolyn Markintel. He played for the HSM football team as defensive back, as well as for the Lenard Eagles baseball team from 9th through 12th grade. In 2023, he was chosen to play for the all Seminole baseball team and has won an award for the toughest out. Number 10, He will be attending LSU in the fall, majoring in pre-med. Number 10, Carter Paul Markinsell. Number 28, John Cooper Scott. Cooper is escorted by his parents, John and Jennifer Scott. He has earned a composite ACT score of 30. He played on the HSM Eagle football team, where he earned district and parish defensive MVP, as well as first team all-state linebacker. He has played for the Menard Eagles baseball team since his freshman year, and has earned first team all-state in his junior year, and first team all-district the past three years. Cooper is committed to Louisiana State University of Eunice to play baseball. Number 28, John Cooper Scott. Number four, Ben Wade. Ben is escorted by his parents, Steve and Donna Wade. He has attended Menard from seventh to 12th grade, where he has played for the Menard Eagle baseball team throughout junior high and high school. 
his sophomore year, he earned second team all district as a catcher, as well as the defensive award. During his junior year, he was awarded the first team all, all district as catcher, as well as an all state honorable mention, coaches award, all Sinlaw catcher, and all region catcher. Ben will be attending the College of the Desert in Palm Desert, California to play baseball and major in kinesiology in hopes of becoming a chiropractor. Number four, Ben Wade. Number seven, Jaden Williams. Jaden is escorted by his parents, Andre and Danielle Williams. He has played for the Holy Savior Menard team in 2023, where they were district champions and was awarded first team all district. He has played for the Menard Eagle baseball team for the past two years, where they were district champions as well as state runners up in 2023. Jaden plans on attending Wiley University, where he will play baseball and major in business. Number seven, Jaden Williams. Number 12, Justin Drake Aldrich. Drake is escorted by his parents, Trevor and Heather Aldrich. He has maintained an AB honor roll all throughout high school. Drake has played for the Menard Eagles baseball team 9th through 12th grade and has earned the title of team captain his 11th and 12th grade year. He has earned first team all district utility in his 11th grade year as well as first team all district for first base his 11th grade year. He has earned the leading way baseball award. Drake has committed next year to play baseball at, Uni at Louisiana Christian University where he will major in biology. Number 12. Justin Drake Aldrich.
Yeah. And welcome back to Eagles Nest here, where we uh, celebrating senior night tonight in this first uh, round game against Glenmore for district. And what you see here on your camera is the dads are going to throw out the first pitch to all their sons. This, this could be dangerous. This could be dangerous, but this is actually yeah. awesome. I, <laughs> yeah, I love it, but, you know. <laughs> Y'all know which one I'm watching, don't you? Uh, I'm watching LaRue because he's talked all this smack about his about his son and how, how he's given his son a oh, strike okay. by Eddie Butterfield. <laughs> St oh, what about you, by Mr. Nat? Oh, no. Mr. That Scott, too done. bounced. Let's see what Mr. Guillory could do. Oh, he's still oh, bringing he, the heat. Yeah, he was bringing the heat. See, Trevor. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what. Maybe we'll Steve we Wade, there we go. Hey, we'll call that one a strike. He framed it, too. Oh, look at Mr. Marcatel with the curveball. <laughs> Mr. Guillory with the, I mean, Mr. Uh, Henry with the curveball. LaRue uh, bounces he, one. He short ops him. Uh, <laughs> got a bowling. That's Is that a holy roller out yeah, there? Yeah, that's Jimmy Lyons for sure. <laughs> So Mr. Bilbo bounces. No, that was uh, oh, that was Mr. Curley. Now Mr. Bilbo with a strike, and Mr. Morrow with a strike on the inside corner. So excellent work there by the dads. Well, what a what an exciting time! Yeah, Fourteen yeah. seniors. Wow, wow. That's, I think somebody posted today. There's there's those football programs that don't graduate. Fourteen seniors. Yeah, um, that was one T. Brett, one team, yeah, McCormick. Yeah. I wouldn't give you credit. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. So. Excuse me. <laughs> Somebody. Excuse me. That's that's me. So. <laughs> but uh, yeah, exciting. Uh, with this game tonight, um, you know, we're, we're with a good good record, having a good season. Of course, yeah. Coach West always does a good job over there. Uh, remember when the, my boys were at school at the. School that competed against them for district for a long time. I think you know. I've asked you, why are they competing in this division or this classification in, in baseball? Do you know? I think it's just pure numbers. Okay. Yeah, I think they're, it was pure numbers, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and to be honest with you, I could ask uh, one of our corporate sponsors, Doug Young Nursery, a company I work for. Okay. And, and, uh, I didn't realize they'd gotten that big. Yeah. So. Okay. And Miss Jones, she could possibly text me, Mary Jones, who's our – Office manager, she could possibly text me what the enrollment is. But, Thank uh, you, sir. Appreciate you. Yeah, but always, they, always appreciate Officer Causey. Yep, yep. Officer Causey here with the drinks for us. But uh, yeah, they, um, they. Matter of fact, they, if I'm not mistaken, this is what I'm thinking. I think they actually had started restricting their junior high okay. players. You know how many how yeah. many players for junior high? Because that is the one thing about you know being K through 12. Uh, you can, and Menard did that for years. Menard wouldn't use seventh and eighth graders, you know, which is perfectly legal yeah. not not to, you know, right. just to avoid that number. I do know this. I know that at one point, uh, you know, because being at Grace, uh, if we had a seventh or eighth grader play varsity, that counted as two. Okay. Okay. Your seventh and eighth graders count as two towards the enrollment. Gotcha. And that's the LHSA enrollment. Yeah. So, which, uh, Everything's based yeah. on. Yeah, uh, I just wasn't aware of them. I saw that it was in the district early. I knew we, we had always, you know, growing up in Pitkin, we'd always played Glenmore. Yeah. Now, I do think the class next B. year. I do think next year, Rapids goes back up. Okay. Glenmore and Oak Hill come back down okay. to the um, to the, the Grace, Vols Charter, um, Harrisonburg, gotcha. Monterey. Uh, so so that'll kind of get things things back in, you know, what we call the traditional district. Um, that's what Coach LaRue was telling me earlier in the week. Um, and uh, we're, we're scheduled for first pitch here at 5. So we're going to look at that, 4-4-6. Four, four, yeah. Looked at the clock at 4-4-6. Four, four, uh, Doug Gann, be yep. proud of that. Want to want to thank Doug Gann for allowing us to do this broadcast and uh, Chuck, Chuck Perkins for all the help and in, uh, in coordinating this stuff for us. Uh, I only text him maybe six or seven times. The past two days okay. with right. with time changes and everything, but uh, <laughs> man, he did a fun. He always does a great job on the graphics to edit whatever yeah. you want to call it. But uh, but he really did a good job on this one. Um, he put all all fourteen seniors on there, you know, and uh, and really um, really did a you know did himself like usual. But uh, but he's Danny Clear. I'm Nick McDaniel. Uh, we're we're the broadcast crew for the. For the Menard Eagles baseball team, it's been a fantastic year. We've had a lot of fun. A few ups and downs in the broadcast booth with some technology, but we think we figured it out. Uh, once again, we're going to 
just go with the A and A pitch cam tonight because we're not going to be on the perch because of the the impending weather. Uh, they want to keep the equipment safe and and not wet. So they'll you'll be um, your view will be obstructed in the outfield, but. Uh, just bear with us. Uh, we're, we're grateful that we can get this one in, and uh, we were able to get last night's in and uh, keep the keep the equipment. What are you expecting from tonight, Danny? You know, this is uh, this is like we talked about last night. This is a game that uh, they win. This game, they're they're outright district champions. Um, you know, going into the playoffs, it's it's about power rankings, where you're at, but you're still some pride in that uh, that district championship. And uh, so, Michael Henry's going on the mound tonight. He's been throwing well. Uh, I think that the you know, coach is confident in what Michael can do. Come out here and, 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 and pitch a good game and get them to the to the next game. But they're they're obviously looking to lock things up here for the district tonight. So I expect them to come out and play well. Yeah, and um, we have a few. We'll, we'll talk about. We're going to go ahead and talk about our Vlar and Green starting lineup for for Glenmore. And we have a few changes for 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 your Eagles. But we're going to go ahead and go to the starting lineup for the. And I have the start line up here somewhere. Huh? There we go. The VLR and green start. <laughs> <laughs> this we, we had to put this together very quickly. <laughs> you know, this has been a little different with us for the for this senior night, but uh, expecting the game to be at six and got moved up to five and uh and then senior night at four thirty. But your VLR and green starting lineups for our starting lineup for Glenmore. Leading off, we have number two, Cameron Parks. In your second hole, we have number seven, Braden Holloway. In your third hole, we have number 24, Kenyon Bordelon. In your cleanup spot, number 12, Hunter Gillespie. At number five, is in your number five hole is number three, JT Thrasher. Batting six, in the sixth hole, actually number six, Wyatt Gillespie. Batting the seventh hole, number 27, Tristan Townley. Batting in the eighth hole, number eight, Nolan Sweat. And your number nine batter is number five, Riley, Riley Coker. And your starting lineup for the Holy Savior Menard Eagles. In your leadoff spot, Cooper Scott. Scott in your leadoff spot. Batting number two. Uh, and the number two hole is number 18, Cohen LaRue. LaRue with a number two hole. And number three hole tonight, number 10, Carter Markentale. Actually playing right field, not the agent. Number Number four batter in the cleanup spot is number 12, Drake Aldridge, who is your DH tonight. In the number five hole, actually moved, moved Ben up one. In the number five hole is uh, four, number four, Ben Wade, your catcher. In the sixth slot tonight, number one, Case Butterfield. Butterfield, is, and he's still in left field. In the seventh slot, number 22, Nate Bilbo. Bilbo is your third baseman. In the eighth hole, man, this is good to see. Number six, Cody Lines. Lines bat number eight and starting first base. And in the nine hole, your shortstop, number 21, Gavin Hilton. Hilton in the nine hole. And your pitcher tonight on the bump is Mike Henry. Mike Henry, number eight, is the pitcher tonight. Man, it's great to see Cody, you know, over there. You know, I know this has been a long season for him. Got injured in football and has been working very hard and uh, moving pretty well over there at first. And uh, doesn't look to have a brace on if he, yeah it does okay it's under his you know, unlike drake he puts it under his his pants but um yeah it's good to see him i went through the pictures during the during the ceremony too i put <laughs> it down there but they got announced and i'd put the camera on them but uh go ahead and finish out the rest of the seniors okay there's 14 of them uh we had uh trey curley yep and uh you're seeing the pictures of uh <laughs> parents was able to uh, provide for us and that's their current senior picture and a picture from their Earlier playing days. Um, yeah. Who else? Uh, Jaden Williams. Jaden. Jaden's there. Jaden got the, the multicolored arm sleeves going on <laughs> there. Drew uh, Knapp. Drew Knapp. Yep. Here's Drew. And that was it, huh? I don't know. We should have one more, right? We have 10 here. That's 10. That's start the lineup. And then that's two. Jake, Nate, Jay Chase, Guillory. Trey. Jay Guillory. Jay. There's Jay. Yep. There's Jay. Jay Guillory. And we, then we might flash him some more again before uh, night's over. What you looking for? Okay. I think we should have one more. I think that was it because we had 10 and then we did four. Okay. Jay, Drew, okay. Jaden, and uh, Co oh, no, Cody. Uh, we'll make sure we didn't miss anybody. Yeah. I already put that information up, but uh, 
Yeah, but um, once again, just a, a great night out here for the seniors. Uh, glad to see we can get this one in. Real excited about this opportunity. Um, you know, Danny, um, Glenmore, smaller school, you know, and, and, and enrollment than what, uh, than what a minority is, but like we talked about with baseball, it only takes nine, and <laughs> you can have a, a good nine or ten, and you can compete with anybody in the state. So, uh, you, you run around across the right pitch, and it can give you a long night. Um, we seen, saw that against uh, Pickering. It took, a, it took them a while to get going against Pickering, uh, against some arms that they, uh, they hadn't really seen. Uh, a lot of and uh, so so yeah the, but we're we're sitting pretty good at four number four in power rankings that looked I looked at it again today and kind of separated a little bit between four and five but need to pick up uh, these two wins here and see what uh, see what goes on behind them and in front of them yeah, and then we still have Buckeye next yeah. uh, a week from yesterday so we have Buckeye on Monday the fifteenth and that game will be at Buckeye right now first pitch scheduled for six o'clock. Let's go ahead and talk about our sponsors here. Uh, we'll talk about our corporate, corporate sponsors. Baylex Federal Credit Union is our title sponsor for all 446 events. Over 286 events uh, for the past weekend. So, so yesterday made 287. So uh, Wallace I Associates is your scoreboard sponsor. Appreciate them. It's bottom left corner there. Doug Young Nursery. Doug Young Nursery in Forest Hill. Go out. We are open to the retail. Uh, so you can drive through. And pick stuff up. We do also have a retail yard at the entrance of the nursery. So go, go support local nursery, 17 miles south of, of Alexandria. Uh, Xmark, oh, I'm sorry, Quibido's Cajun Cafe. Quibido's Cajun Cafe. Support John Valenzuela there. Southern Heating and Cooling, Southern Air, is most people, most people know them by. They've been a, a sponsor for a long time. Uh, BK Distributors, BK Distributors, uh, for all your trophy needs, you know, your apparel, stuff like that. BU Designs, so Melissa Gann, um, and all, she does the tumbler, she does shirts, she does all the apparel as well, does a really good job. Kimberly Harrell Appraiser, uh, she's for, for all your appraisals. Um, if you're about to sell a house or about to purchase a house. Uh, Sadler's Towing, Sadler's Towing does the, the ticker that goes, the scoreboard ticker that goes along uh, along the bottom of the screen for the football games. Jason Hawk, Farm Bureau Insurance. Jason Hawk's a supporter of all Central Louisiana athletics, you know, and not only recreational, but high school, junior high, very involved with the community. Appreciate Jason and his family. Polos and plaids, uh, our fishing shirts that we had for, for our broadcast for the football season was uh, brought to us by Polos and Plaids. So, that's our corporate sponsors for 446 Sports. Appreciate all those guys. Now our sponsors for Menard Baseball, Jose Avery Menard Baseball. Certified Transmission, Del Moro. That's our title sponsor for Menard Baseball. Riverside Hospital. You, uh, you can choose your health care. You have a right to choose your health care. Choose Riverside Hospital. Exmark Sinlaw Dealers. Uh, eight local dealers here in Sinlaw. So go out and support Exmark and Sinlaw Dealers. Laniap Home Care. Laniap Home Care. Uh, Appreciate those guys for being involved. Green Garden Nursery, Green Garden Nursery. Steve and Steve and Don are wholesale only, but if you're going to be doing landscaping or anything, uh, you know, tell your tell your landscapers or people involved about Green Garden Nursery. Sabine State Bank, 17 locations in Central Louisiana, closest one being right next door here to Holy Savior Menard. So go out and support Sabine State Bank. Louisiana Land Bank, they've been a uh, Robert Crotty. He's an alum of Menard and, uh, you know, supporter of the Menard baseball. Magnolia Construction. Magnolia Construction has, you know, um, built our perch out there that we haven't been able to utilize the past two week, uh, past two games, but uh, but really appreciate Chris and Albany and that. Buffalo Wild Wings. Buffalo Wild Wings are host of our coaches show, and uh, and we enjoy that on Sunday evenings from 7 to 8. There will be one this week. A&A Club, who's... You know, our pitch cam that you're, you're looking at right now, appreciate these guys with that. Uh, it's south of the four-way for your first pitch sponsor and, uh, and, and also provides, you know, food for, for us throughout the, throughout the game. John Wolf, John Wolf and his family for supporting Holy Savior Menard School and Athletics. We appreciate John coming on board and helping us. Danny, we're uh, how far from the... We're about three minutes. Take a break. Yeah, we'll go ahead and take a break. You're watching Bernard Eagle Baseball and 446 Sports. Our mobile banking app is changing the way we bank. Things are getting easier. 
Transactions are getting safer and you have access 24 seven. All the functionality of banking you're used to made easier to use anywhere, anytime and more secure than ever. Simple, seamless, safe. Download our mobile app today. I'm a shout out to him. In central Louisiana, you might see me at the ballparks or soccer fields, or we might cross paths at the grocery store. I'm your local Farm Bureau insurance agent, your local expert when it comes to protecting what you love and depend on. I'm Jason Hall. Learn more about how Farm Bureau insurance can save you time and money. So talk to Hall at 318-791-HAWK and let me help you protect your biggest investments. Real service, real people. Farm Bureau insurance. There are some things in life you can fix, and some things are better left to the professionals. When your vehicle has transmission problems, what will you do? Go where you know. Go where you know, certified transmission. Time for our red, white, and cool summer event at Southern Air Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Right now, you can save on a new energy saving system. No money down, 0% interest, and no payments till June 2024. Call Southern Air Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing or visit us online. In central Louisiana, you might see me at the ballparks or soccer fields, or we might cross paths at the grocery store. I'm your local Farm Bureau insurance agent, your local expert when it comes to protecting what you love and depend on. I'm Jason Hall. Learn more about how Farm Bureau insurance can save you time and money. So talk to Hall at 318-791-HAWK and let me help you protect your biggest investments. Real service, real people. Farm Bureau insurance. BK Distributors is proud to support high school athletics on 446 Sports. BK is the one-stop shop for trophies, banners, awards, letter jackets, and just about anything award-related. And now, welcome BK Apparel and BK Promotions to the family. For all your spirit apparel needs and anything you need to brand your business, when you think of anything you need with your name on it, think BK. Check them out on Facebook or at bkdistrib.com. BK Distributors, apparel and promotions in Pine.
and this uh, and the Star Spangled Banner. That was great. Hope you guys could hear it. Since we're in the box here, we trying to use the ambiance mic. And uh, just want to shout out to Mr. Martin and Miss Loretta Lines, who's Cody's grandparents, and go way way back. This is before you were involved with soccer, Danny. Uh, they were both involved with the running of Ceylon Soccer Association. Uh, Martin was very involved with the officiating side with my dad, traveled many miles through this, uh, through this state, you know, to, to do, and, uh, and glad to see Cody's, you know, at first base, and uh, it looks like we're about ready for the first pitch here. We're about to have Ben Wade throw, throw the ball down. I guess it'll be the, the next one here. But, um, so we're coming in um, <clears throat> to this game. We started the season 0-5. We talked about the difficult schedule that uh, that Coach Marks uh, played or scheduled and, and started the season 0-5 against some quality teams. They've gone on a run, 17-3 and in the last 20, 11 in a row, 8-0 um, no in district. Um, so this is uh, this is the time. And another, you know, this is what he talked about, wanting to be playing well here at the end. And seems to be uh, playing well. Got a couple good non-district wins last three weeks. Um, started with, uh, what, uh, Iota. Iota. Yep. Started with Iota. And then, uh, Tioga, Tioga last yeah. week and then Grant last night. Yep. So, um, and then along with the district plays, um, uh, <clears throat> sweeps of Rose Pine and Voiles, Pickering and, uh, who else did we have? Um, Oakdale. Oakdale. So. Yep. So we have now here, we have Cameron Parks up the bat with Braden Holloway and your X mark on deck circle and your first pitch tonight. Looks like it's going to be at 5.04 from Mike Henry to Ben Wade. Two pitch, strike one there to Parks. Good start there for, for Mike. Yeah, I think we've seen that if Mike, uh, when Mike's on, he's, 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 he's hard to handle for uh, the opposing team. But uh, play there to Nate Bilbo. Nilbo fields it. Cody, good. <laughs> good there by Cody Lyons on that First play from Nate, so uh, five to three from Bilbo to Lions. Good to be able to say that for the first time this year. And uh, so Parks goes down. Holloway's up the bat now with Bordelon in the X mark on deck circle. Do you remember Austin Holloway that played with Allie and Matthew? Not really. Okay, him and the him and Langston. Okay. Yeah, Austin is the older brother of this Holloway, of Braden. Okay. Cannot believe that. Austin and Matthew and Allie are two years out of high school now, and this is the the younger ones that were probably in just getting out of strollers whenever I whenever I coached Austin. So one ball, one strike there. Got the pink bat tonight. I still cannot. I'm not used to the basketball shoes for. Oh, that's a hit there to Nate. Nate's going to test Cody again. A good job. So two up, two down. So for good start for Mike here, yeah. but yeah, the um, you know the basket, I, and that's probably old original Jordans, isn't it? Or am I, am I, or was that before the Jordans? But that's that's probably the originals. I thought so. Yeah. So the did, you ever, did you watch the movie Air? Did you watch that movie? No. It's actually a pretty interesting movie. Okay. You need to watch it. I need to watch it. So I didn't realize. Well, we'll, we'll talk about it, but. Uh, yeah, Borderlands up the bat now with Gillespie and your X mark on deck circle, and that's well, strike one. Well, if Mike's had any any um, hiccups Issues? to his games, <laughs> it's been his starts. Yeah. <laughs> um, I hope this is a sign of things to come for him because uh, some walk issues, but it looks like tonight he's he's finding the zone yeah. early. Of course, like always, we've talked about you just let your defense behind you do the work, and this they've had a good job all year. Strike oh, two there. Yep, so one and two now to to Bordelon. He's got that pitch working. Bordelon's your first baseman for the Wildcats. One, two pitch. Oh, well, we come, make come a off play. of Mike. Cameron's going to try to get it. Oh. Not quite. Picks it, but Definitely going to give that one a hit, right, yeah, Danny? Yeah, that's a hit. Check on Henry, see if he's okay. Looks like he's all right. So, Borlon's on base for the first hitter with Thrasher, your pitcher, your next mark on deck circle. So, back to the – I didn't realize, you know, all the all the recruitment it, to get Michael Jordan to sign with Nike. 
Oh, wow. And the original shoes were those red and black shoes. With the yes. time, mm-hmm. you got fined if you played in anything other than white. Oh, okay. And they knew that going in, and Nike said, don't worry, we're paying Pay the, the fine. fine. I got you. Okay. It's a pretty interesting story. I'm not, you know, it's, it's based on the, the actual, but I'm not sure how much is embellished. Strike one here from Henry to, to Gillespie. But yeah, Converse and Adidas were the basketball sh- companies at the time. I did not realize Adidas. Yep. I actually had Converse Magic Johnsons. I was a little point guard, and I was little at the time, one and one. So of course, I was Johnson Converse. Uh, of course, we all wore Chuck Taylors. Oh, we had, yeah. It was the Chuck Taylors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. When the designers came out, when the designer <laughs> shoes came out, and I would get one pair of shoes for school and one pair of shoes for basketball. That was it. And they had the last. And usually the basketball shoes towards the end of the, the basketball season, I'd just wear those the rest of the school year. One, two here. Runner's going. Ben from his knee. It's like he's going to be wow. safe there. So that's actually a courtesy runner. No, that's no, no that's him. Okay. okay, so that's a borderline still second base. It's two to two, two and two now. Still two outs. What a pitch! What a pitch! So being State Bank strike out there from Mike Henry. So what do we have here, Danny? Glimore has no runs on one hit. One runner left on base. Coming up for the Eagles, Scott, LaRue, and Markintel. You're watching Eagle Baseball on Hi, I'm Kimberly Harrell, Certified Residential Appraiser. I am currently a leading provider of appraisal services for mortgage lending, employee relocation, estate planning, and community property settlements. My experience in real estate over the past 13 years and currently serving as president of the Greater Central Louisiana Realtors Association has given me a clear understanding of the real estate world and the ever-changing market we live in today. For any of your valuation needs, give me Kimberly Harrell a call. And welcome back to Eagles Nest. Here we're uh, here, Holy Savior Menard Eagles up the bat for the first time in the bottom of the first inning, and uh, have to plug in my tablet here so. I have a lot of things going on today, Danny. So, of course, grateful we're here and able to get this get this going. Yeah, you and I are both a little radar watchers, and so we uh, kind of checked all day, and looking at the forecast to see what was going on. Hopefully, this uh, can get this in. And I'm not going to doubt. I'm not going to doubt them again after last night. I'm not right. going to doubt yeah, them. You're right. You're right. Because <laughs> we sat here an hour before. First pitch last night, and the bottom fell out. <laughs> the bottom fell out, and they still got seven innings in, so definitely not going to. But uh, we have Cooper Scott up to bat here. Uh, Cohen LaRue and the X mark on deck circle. You know, and Coop's been, he's been on a roll here lately, not only from the from the, the plate here, but also from the mound, and uh, just glad to see him rounding into rounding into form on the at the plate. Yeah, I mean, I think we talked about it early. They weren't hitting the ball like they wanted to. Um, bottom of the lineup was kind of carrying them through a few games. And uh, Cooper is starting to come around. Um, Cohen in that two spot. First pitch here to Scott. A little high, it looks like, from here. And this is a Thrasher. Cooper's in 269, but I'm, uh, he's probably raised that average 70 or 80 points in the last two weeks. 2 here. Ball three, a little outside, huh? So, uh, 
Probably not the start that Thrasher wanted, but we'll definitely take it. 3 0 pitch. That's a strike right down the center. We'll be two hitting 279 or 269, but I think his own base percentage is probably leading the team. Yeah, for sure. Riverside Hospital foul ball there straight back into your screen. He does uh, between walks and hit by pitches, he gets on base a lot. Cooper Scott with the leadoff single here on a 3 2 count from our 3 2 pitch from Thrasher to get him started here. Cohen LaRue. Up the bat now with Carter Marcatel on the X mark on deck circle. Coach Thomas Sully from uh, Scully, excuse me, from uh, uh, Lady Eagle Softball just uh, gave me word that the playoff brackets come out tomorrow for the for softball and uh, the ladies are PR number four. Win streaks and look at four spot for baseball and first pitch there from Thrasher outside curveball and for baseball and softball is. The magic spot, I mean, obviously you're matched up with one on the other side, but that's the spot that keeps you home until sulfur. Yeah. Yep, a one pitch here from Thrasher to, to LaRue in the inning, and that uh, center fielder is Townley. So Townley with the put out there of Cohen LaRue. So now we have Carter Mark and Coach West putting the positions the way he – Yes, I'm finally getting used to the numbers again. It's been – and it's been 20 some years since I was involved with uh, with um, baseball, so it took me a little little while. But yeah, Danny, if it does not rain, I'm gonna be disappointed because I mean I'm not gonna be disappointed for the guys, but I enjoy being on that left field perch out there. Yeah, we yeah. have a second camera, and although up here you get to be a part of the the spectators, so it's a lot of fun as well. So oh one here, that's. Popped up. Let's see if that's going to get out of play. No, nope, that's going to be, be caught by first baseman, uh, Mortal on, so two outs after Cooper Scott single. Uh, LaRue and Marcantel go out, go down, and see if Drake Aldridge can't pick him up. I'd love for Cooper to go here pretty soon. Yeah, I'm wondering. I'm <clears> wondering. <throat> they may, I mean, of course, they, they do get scouting reports. So I wonder if Brasher has a, has a um, good pickoff move there. So. Well, I imagine he's wanting to get uh, in scoring position for Drake. First pitch here to Drake, and Coop's gone. And hey, oh, jeez, <laughs> <laughs> man, man, what, what are we gonna have to do to to get him? Well, he held on, but wow, what a what a slide there! He went feet first and. So that was a ball, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Okay, so 1 0 here now to Aldridge with Cooper Scott now in scoring position. So last night, Cooper, of course, the, the, the turf was a little more wet last night. That's a good pitch there from Thrasher for a first strike. Had a little more moisture on it, and Carter takes off the first inning, and, and he slides head first past the bag, touches the bag, safe, but about 12 feet off the bag and has to take off the third, gets in the pickle, and gets. It's, gun, it's thrown out at third, so gets a stolen base and a put out on the same play. Yeah, I was impressed with just how fast he got it. Oh, that's that's trouble. Let's see if that one gets down. Nope, that's a good play there by the right fielder. Right fielder Holloway with the put out there. So what do we have here, Danny? Uh, the Eagles had one hit, no runs, one hit, one runner left on base. Coming up for the Glenmore Wildcats, Thrasher. Gillespie and Townley. You're watching Eagle Baseball 446 Sports. is proud to support high school athletics on 446 Sport. BK is the one-stop shop for trophies, banners, awards, letter jackets, and just about anything award-related. And now, welcome BK Apparel and BK Promotions to the family for all your spirit apparel needs and anything you need to brand your business. When you think of anything you need with your name on it, think BK. Check them out on Facebook or at bkdistrib.com. BK Distributors, apparel and promotions in Pineville.
And we're back at Eagles Nest here. And uh, for mention, Coach Thomas Scully is is in the press box with us now. Welcome, Coach. So uh, we've talked about you still PR number four? PR number four, yes. Okay. As of this afternoon, we okay. sure are. So is today the day where everybody says so strike one or foul ball here? Is today the day where everybody can kind of contest if there's any issues or stuff like that? Or is that tomorrow that they do that? They actually start that tomorrow okay. morning early. Uh Right now, what they're uh, doing right now is finishing up um, the uh, season ends today. So, you've okay, got some teams okay. kind of finishing up today. So, we will uh, we should know something a little bit after lunch tomorrow. So, I see 24 teams make the playoffs in softball division 30. Yes. yes. And those are the first round buys? It's uh, first eight. First eight. First so eight get eight. a first round okay. buy. Yeah. Okay. And you all play one one game. You don't yeah, play. Okay. Yeah, it's just a one game series. Um, goes to the high seed, um, so they are they're always um, they'll always be the home team. Last year there was a little uh, uh, confusion because number one actually came to us when we were actually at nine. Yeah, and they've changed that completely this year. Correct. You you won't travel if you're the higher seed. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, we learned that Alexandria football. <laughs> That's right. We uh, we thought that. We would have had Edna Carr at Alexandria, but they changed that. So, oh, there's a shot there to Cody. See if Cody can get it to Mike. To Mike, well good done, job there, Mike. Cody and Mike. Way to that's, cover that's there, the Mike. Stuff you work on in preseason, covering first base as the pitcher, and and that was well done by both of them. Yep. So first out of the inning there for for the Wildcats, and we have number six up to bat, which is Gillespie. That was Thrasher, pitcher that just grounded out. Gillespie up to bat with Talon X mark on deck circle. So that puts you, if standing uh, ratings hold true right now, uh, what, Parkview Baptist? Is that 12? It would be 12? It, it's actually uh, ULAB, which is uh, it's 13 and uh, 13. Uh, okay, yeah, 13. 13, 20. Okay. Should be, um, let's see, I just had it pulled up. Yes. Yeah, 13 and 20. So 13 is um, ULAB and, and uh, Acadian okay. Renaissance Charter is actually 20. Uh, they were actually. Acadian Renaissance was actually in the 20 slot last year playing 13. Okay. Um, and they will play um, – they'll have until Saturday. So, the first round will be Thursday through Saturday. So, we'll get the first round by. And then our game, uh, the by district round, will have to be played by um, Wednesday of next week. And then you have Thursday, Friday, Saturday to get in the quarterfinal game. And quarterfinals are – at home, the only semi and finals and sulfur, correct? And sulfur, correct, okay. yeah. So so you'll play at home. Um, me and the higher seed will play at home. We would play both games uh, at home um, with the quarterfinal game being the last one at home. That's what we was talking about earlier. So that's that magic four spot that keeps you at home for both rounds. Correct. Regardless, so. That's right. And, and so the, the unique thing about that is uh, right now it looks like that would be Notre Dame out of Crowley coming to us in okay. the quarterfinals if it all works out. Riverside Hospital foul ball there. So, question: What do you do for the bye? Can you pick up a? Yeah, is that, can you pick up a game? Can you do? You know, scrim. I mean, how? How? What do you? What do you do during the bye? Yeah. So what we'll do is um, we've already talked. I've already spoken with Coach Fry over at Pineville. We'll actually scrimmage them, uh, depending on when the University Lab Acadian Renaissance game is. Uh, so I can go and watch. So we'll we'll scrimmage them the opposite day of when they they uh, are playing. But yeah, we'll do that. As a first round, you're, you're given that opportunity, and then uh, after that, you just move on. That way, we're, we're not off. Right. We're not on the field for five or six days as far as playing somebody else. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. You get in such a rhythm. Yeah. You know, you don't. We talk about it, and of course, they kind of they done away with it back in soccer now, back with 32. But yeah, it was. It, some coaches liked it, some of them didn't. They didn't like to get out of that rhythm of of playing and having a bias. So. And yeah, and that, you know that's important for your kids, especially for our kids who you know. Hitting wise, your time, and you don't want to lose your time. And I mean, there's only so much you can do on the machine, so much you can do front toss. Um, you know, we don't throw our pitchers live uh, at practice. Uh, we do earlier in the year, but not not once we get to this time of the season. Uh, we don't want to take a chance of getting anybody hurt. And coach, you had one senior. Is that correct? One senior, Emily okay. Desail. Yes. Okay. Yeah, no. She she might not remember that, but I coached her. <laughs> she played soft uh, t-ball with Allie uh, way back when. Um, I think she was probably a four-year-old playing with the six, five, and six-year-olds. But, uh, but yeah, uh, she 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 probably doesn't remember that. But I, obviously, I remember the name and, and knew that she was a real ball player from back then. That's awesome. Three-two here. Play here by Gavin Hilton. 
Hilton to lines for six to three out there on the uh, we was Kawhi talking Wyatt Gillespie. So we was talking earlier. Uh, you and you and Coach Marks kind of put a similar path together to the to <laughs> to, to, to get to the postseason. Is uh, you started out the season uh, playing a tough schedule and and maybe taking some lumps, but you've come on strong of late. We 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 do, and you know that's a, the great relationship he and I have, and. Uh, you know, we talk about that a lot as far as how how we challenge our our players and and you know a lot about the just the game itself, just the mindset of how you know how you get these guys fired up and these gals believing in themselves. And so, you know, they, we feed off each other, use different different things um, throughout the year, uh, spend a lot of time just talking, uh, you know, just strategizing. Yeah, that was a pop a pop up there from Townley, and it got a little, a little Miss confusing out there. I, I don't know how much it was, you know, between Coop I mean, and, and Larue. You know, Coop doesn't Coop play center, center field, field a lot, a so lot. So, can, but yeah. you know, still, baseball's baseball. He probably should have should have known he had to make that call him off on that. But so we have a runner on now, which is like I said, Townley with sweat up the bat and Coker and the X mark on deck circle and uh, Coach. So. How many years have you been softball coach, head coach at Ebenard? Uh, this is this is my sixth year here. Okay, um, I came from Sacred Heart of Ville Platte okay. in uh, nineteen, and uh, so I uh, actually coached the nineteen season. So I came in here and I came here in eighteen. I started the school year eighteen nineteen. So okay. um, been very blessed, uh, very, very fortunate. Came in with a team that was uh, had just made a semifinal run, um, or actually a, a runner up run i'm sorry and uh and then we turned around and went back in 19 and i had a runner-up season and COVID uh yeah. hit us uh, and then 21 we went back um as in the finals and was a runner-up again wow um and then uh in 22 we finished in the semi lost in the semifinals to notre dame so we actually lost um 19 to notre dame we lost 21 to notre dame uh lost to notre dame in the semifinals um in 22 and then uh, last year we lost to Calvary, of course, in the quarters, and then, uh, you know, here we are again. Just you know, great opportunity. Very, very pleased with our uh, young ladies uh, and the the turnaround they made after being five and ten, and then, you know, now we sit at twenty and ten, and the first phase of the season's over, and you know we get to look forward to those playoffs. And like I told them, now it's it's uh, no turning back. You know, loser goes home, so we don't have another another day to, or another game if you don't if you don't play well. How many pitchers do you use? Well, I actually have three pitchers, uh, but we've been very fortunate to use uh, Kaylee Mevin has come on, and she's thrown probably 90% of our games. Okay. Emily DeSalle threw a little bit for us. Of course, she's got a tweaked hamstring, so she will not put pitch at all in the postseason. But we also have Sophie Giordano, who threw a little bit and has thrown a little bit for us from time to time. Walk there, giving up by Henry. So now with two outs, we have runners on first and second. Uh, need to settle down here a little bit. Uh, your number nine batter, Cocker. Uh, Coker. Coker is up to bat with uh, Parks and your X mark on deck. And so they get to – it's not like, you know, baseball where right. it's overhand and everything. So. No pitch count. Yeah. Um, and, and the thing with Kaylee is just endurance, condition, uh, rest, ice and arm, taking care of her body. Um, she'll get tired from time to time as far as her entire body being tired. She throws with her entire body. She's fun did. Um, we ran into her. I just I – just, I, I told – Coach Danny, I said, you know, I said, not that I ever plan on coaching again, but if, if I happened to be and it was baseball, I think I would just wear my shorts. But uh, now I was just curious. That's a little fun question there. Um, no, they would love for us to, but we're going to pass. Pitches. How many pitches? How many different pitches softball players throw? Wow. Well, it depends on the pitcher. You know, right, Kaylee, right. Kaylee has uh, – she's got a fastball, screwball, uh, drop, rise, change. Um, she throws them all pretty well. Um and she's constantly working on all of them. Now, we don't really throw all of them in a game. She kind of locks in on two or three that she feels like she can control pretty well. And uh, it's, it's a variety. You just never know. It's, it's what she, she feels good about, and that's kind of what, what Coach Laney Smith, who's a pitching coach, she kind of decides. Come on, Case. Yes, sir. Great catch, uh, catch there by Case wow. Butterfield to, to when I was lead off, lead off here to Parks. I hope that's on our screen. But, uh, well, Coach, man, I appreciate you taking your time. Absolutely. You know, good, good season and congratulations and look forward to seeing what you guys do in the playoffs. Thank you so much. Go Eagles. Yes, sir.
Okay, welcome back to Eagles Nest here where Case Butterfield with the acrobatic catch to keep the game scoreless in the top of the second inning there. So. Ben, 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 Ben's up. They yep. swapped it up tonight. Yep. Oh, I thought you were saying about Case it. with the catch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. My bad, my bad. <laughs> ben weighed up the bat with Case Butterfield in the X mark on deck circle. And Danny is correct. They moved Ben up a spot in the lineup tonight. So Riverside Hospital foul ball there for strike one. Ben's earned his way to move up a spot. He's uh he's been barreling up barreling up some balls uh as of late. Went two for three last night. Of course, one of the two he, he barrels isn't out. The the other one was a swinging bunt, but still two for three in the books. Yeah, curveball there high now side, one and one here. So and that was uh, Parks. I mean he that that shot he hit the case. Uh that was that would have been two for sure if yeah. that would have gone down. Oh, there's another rip there. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Ben's feeling it. Good job here, Ben. Uh, and so that's leadoff hitter in both innings on. So come on, boys. Let's yeah. take advantage of this. Case Butterfield up the bat with Nate Bilbo on your X mark here on deck circle. Some rain. Yep. So we yeah, are seeing him yeah, see people scattering. So makes you wonder. So, so we learned a rule last night. It's five innings, mm -hmm. you know, once you get to the fifth. So it's like LSUA has a coach here watching this game. This is senior night for the 2024. 2024. Boy, that makes me <laughs> appreciate that I'm still alive here, Danny. Yeah. So 14 seniors for your Eagles. And Case trying to bunt and see if that one's going to get down. That's a Rivers uh, Hospital foul ball there. Fortunately, it was just a foul ball yeah, and a strike. We, uh, we had a pop-up on the bunt last night, and probably one that could have been. It was a uh, catcher just couldn't get there quick enough. So, Coach Mark's trying to manufa manufacture a run, but uh, he's probably not happy with the execution right now. Yeah, I kind of glanced at him whenever he – So, uh, and That's probably not the pitch you want to bunt. No, and Thrasher looks like he might be difficult to bunt off of, too. Uh, that ball moves. Yeah, it was up in the zone. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, Ronnie was here talking. And, I mean, again, I think you've got to execute your pitch. But if, you're, if you've got an option, you see them square around, and that pitch is going to be um, up, then we can uh, – oh, they're line drive to center field. Yeah, it's going to be caught by the center fielder, so got – Jay coming back, and, uh, and now we're now joined. Hope that turn was – I turned it down, didn't I? Okay, ready? All right, so I always pronounce your name incorrectly. It's Laney, correct? Yes. Coach Laney, what's your last name? Smith. Laney Smith is here, and you're pitching coach, or y'all kind of do everything? Um, I'm mainly pitching, Mainly yes. pitching, okay. And she's with the Eagles softball team, Lady Eagles softball. And, uh, man, what a season. We were just talking to Coach Scully. Congratulations, 16-game win streak. It's the pitching coach, right? Yes. That's right. It's all of it. That's everything. <laughs> we, were, uh, we were watching really, the – Really, it's Kaylee. <laughs> <laughs> we were watching the um, uh, Chuck Perkins. Our, he does the um, the Eagles uh, – the Indians, yeah. Lady, Lady Indians uh, softball. And he had uh, Billy – uh, in there one time, and and Billy called it the bump, and we we learned very quickly it's a circle. It's mm -hmm. not it's not the bump. So yeah, <laughs> is that Jay that uh, yeah yep, Jay with a stolen base Jay. there? So I, I was going to ask Coach Coach Scully a second ago, but you know the inning ended. He said that your pitcher has a a drop ball and a changeup. What's the difference? Because I just thought a drop ball was a change. What's the difference? Um, it's all about the spin. The spin okay. is two totally different things. Um, and in softball, there's – I don't – I mean, of course, in baseball, I don't know what all kind of spins they throw. But um, you have a screwball, which comes on the inside for a right-handed batter, a curveball that goes away on a right-handed batter and inside on a left-handed batter, a changeup um, that can be thrown a few different ways. And then a drop ball, uh, of course, goes down in the zone and a rise ball goes up. Mm -hmm. it, so a rise ball, is that – is it a, a fastball usually? Because it's the it's the hardest pitch usually. Okay, uh, it, it's and also it's the spin that it's they the spin. spin and it yep. it stays higher in the zone where if you're kind of like a four seam fastball for the for the guys, yep. they'll stay it on plane um, where a two seam usually moves from side to side a little bit. Uh, rise ball is going to be that four seam that kind of stays on plane, so it gives it the appearance that it's rising, but it's just not dropping. Gotcha. And how long have you been in Menard? 
Um, this is my second season. Okay. Are you? Did you go to school here? Or I did not. No, I graduated okay. from Buckeye. Okay. All right. So, Lady so what's, uh, what's Kaylee? What's what's she doing well right now? What's uh, she? Um, you know, I told her last night we went to Pine Prairie and tried to get in a game. We got stopped in the fourth inning, and I told her, I said, I think that's the hardest you've ever thrown, and it was raining. So I, I kind of had a laugh with her a little bit. <laughs> um, but um, she's really – she's mastered her fastball and being able to locate that pretty much anywhere I call it, which is a game changer, and her changeup is spot on. So really that's, that's all I've been religiously calling – um, I've always been a believer in if you can master two pitches, you can get anybody out just like that. You don't have to have five pitches. So. Yeah, I mean, I think change of pace is probably the, the – if if kids can figure that out, that's probably the biggest. You know, movement's awesome, but I think change of pace is probably the and, – and the key to the change up is I'm sure it's like baseball is making it look like it's going to be the same pitch as a fastball. Yep. And so the deception – that looked like that came off his leg as a foul ball, but I guess they didn't see it. So that's going to be a ground up there from Nate Bilbo. So Cody Lyons up for his first at bat of the season. Great to see this young man oh, out. Oh, I know. He's excited. Yeah. <laughs> Gavin Hilton in your X mark on deck circle. And uh, and Jay advanced to third on the fielder's choice. But um, so Laney, um faculty, non-faculty, CCP? Okay, faculty. I what do you teach? I uh, teach ninth through 12th grade history. Okay. So uh, I teach pretty much all of these guys. Excellent. Excellent. So, so your whole staff, oh, that's strike mm -hmm. one there. So the whole staff is, is faculty. Yes. That's awesome. That's, that's good. Coach and KK is not. Okay. She, so you she'll have sub fourth? every once okay. in a while. But, okay. yes, it's four of us. Okay. I got you. Now the rain's really coming down. Riverside High School. So you're going to make the if, the, if the standings hold as is, you're going to make the trip down with Coach Scully to Watts University Lab? Depending on when they play, yeah. yes. And um, <laughs> watching the kids in front right. of us with the umbrella and the football. 0-2 pitch here to Cody. Foul ball there off the catcher's mask there. Hope he's okay. Looks like the umpire is going to take a second to let him catch his breath. So what great Kaylee is, was she a She's sophomore? She's a sophomore. Yeah. Okay. So you got her for two more years. You got any, any other young arms coming up? Um. Sophie's been helping us, but Sophie's actually older than um, than Kaylee. Okay. She's a junior. And then Emily, of course, before she pulled that hamstring, uh, she was helping us in the circle with some off speed and everything else. She has a, a good bit of a difference in her delivery, so the mix of those two really help. But um, Kaylee's been holding it down by herself um, pretty much every game. Um, she's learned to start ahead, and that's that's been a big benefit for her. That always helps your your off speed pitches Absolutely. when you can when you can pitch ahead. So Cody's now worked it back to two two. I went to school with Julio. I'm oh, two really? years older. Played baseball. Played football. He was my quarterback. So uh, we'll look at this pitch here. Oh, Cody goes down swinging. We'll we'll stay here for just a second so I can tell this story. Uh, so so he was our he was our starting pitcher. We lost in the semifinals to Woodlawn. I mean he just ran out of gas. Okay, but from the from the middle of the season to the end of the season. He never washed his socks. He, he, <laughs> he has left, told us this he story. He left them. That is a <laughs> yeah. true story. He left them in the in his locker. Yeah. Okay. And uh, fortunately, we got out of there. The next day, didn't get close enough. But uh, but a lot of the stuff that he probably tells you, believe believe ninety nine oh, yeah. percent of it. He he was a great ball player, very good quarterback, but definitely he led us in home runs. Uh, he was a sophomore that year and uh, played first base whenever Donovan Davis, who is another one of your parents here. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, we had a guy named, named Derek Reed. That, that was our three pitchers that year. But uh, but yeah, he he was a great pitcher and uh, and good guy and uh, and really enjoyed him as a teammate. So like I said, anything anything he says, and I don't know about now with with the coaching and stuff. Oh but no, we the, um, <laughs> the I enjoy was, coaching with him. He is a huge asset to our coaching staff and the girls. You know, they excellent. look up to him and pretty much anything that they, he tells them whenever they're in the box, you know, they're all in on it. Yeah, so they good. trust him. So, are softball players as superstitious as baseball players is? Um, I was in high school. Was you? I was. Um, I, I would be. I don't know about my socks and everything, <laughs> but I had a hair ribbon that I would wear. Okay. My, I wore my hair the same way after I figured out, you know, when I started doing good, I didn't change anything. There you go. So, I get it. I get the superstition. Did you pitch? I did. Okay. I was all state pitcher um, for Buckeye my junior and senior year. 
and I played third and shortstop. State champion? State runner-up. State runner-up. Okay. So what year? What, did you graduate? 20. I, 20. Because okay. I knew that they, they've won one, what, since or before they've you were? They've won two since. since. Okay. I thought so. I knew that they were... I knew they were. Uh, they were they doing got a good well, one so. out there right now. The the Henry girl, correct? Yeah. Yep, she's, she she's was an eighth grader whenever I was a senior. Okay. And I believe she's a senior now. Yeah. Riverside Hospital foul ball there. So, so um, you know, our founder is taking credit for your win streak because of the the Blazing Wing Challenge. So, <laughs> is there? Can can we see about something with? Coach Scully again, you know, for winning district, some type of celebration. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. it's all that fair. Yeah, so, yeah. you know what? I think that you could probably convince him to to do a little something. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, have, I'll have Doug work on that, but uh, good uh, good leadoff hit there from from Glenmore's leadoff batter here. So now we have number twenty four Bordelon up to bat with Gillespie next mark on Dickens. Anything you want to tell the tell the ladies that might be. Tell you tell the girls that might be might be watching us or listening to us or may go back and listen for, for going forward for the team. You know we're we're super excited to see where um, where the bracket comes out to be at. I think we've got a whole lot of momentum coming into playoffs. Um, the kind of momentum not a lot of teams around here have, and I think we're ready to take advantage of it. And you will see us on championship Saturday. I can I can tell you that. I like to hear that. So that's a great job and. and Coach, we appreciate it, and uh, I, y'all, you two have enlightened me on uh, Coach Scully, and of course Danny as well, and, and Laney have enlightened me on. I've watched college softball; every, you know, everybody watches it there when they all get to Oklahoma City, but because uh, it's amazing to watch. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a fast game. It's very impressive. I, I like seeing the what they say would be the the speed if it was a you know baseball pitch, and uh, it's just unbelievable how 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 athletic. You know those ladies are and the, the job they do, and uh, we've watched a n- number of the games, Riverside Hospital foul ball there that that you guys have played, and uh, look forward to to seeing what the bracket come out and see see you Absolutely. guys going forward. We appreciate it. Absolutely. That's Coach Laney. Thanks a lot. Go Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Coach. All right, we'll see if <clears throat> Mike can pitch around another another jam. That one's fouled there. So, Borlon up here. He's uh, he's he singled his first time up. He hit the sharp liner in the left center field. That's a very impressive coaching staff that yeah. the Lady Eagles have put together. And uh, and I, I pick on whenever Lenny was on, pick on Julio about maybe not, you know, knowing as much now. But I I, I guarantee he's a good asset. So, see if this, Gavin's gonna catch this one on the. The pop up there. So that's your first out of the inning here, with uh, with now. Let's see. I think this is yeah, number twelve is Gillespie with Thrasher. Your pitcher up to on the X mark on deck circle, and uh, sixteen in a row. And uh, I would have liked to have thought thought about. It. I would ask how what the score was because Pine Prairie they're 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 solid. They're very good. I'd like to see where that was at in the fourth inning. Gillespie struck out last time up. Speaking of innings, I have us still in the second. We're in the top of the third. Coop's going to get under this one and make the catch there. So Gillespie flies out to Cooper Scott for the second out of the inning. And this is top of the third. Brings up Thrasher, your your pitcher, with Townley and your X mark on deck circle. So it looks like the, looks like the rain's kind of yeah, subsided a little bit. So that's good. <clears throat> I think it'll be a little lighter before the heavy stuff comes in, but uh, we we got to uh, Eagles got to start getting some rolling here. Whew. he's got a little tighter strike zone than, than last night. Yeah, has been consistent though. The one zero pitch here from Henry. That's one's low, two low. What's his pitch count? Now do you know her? Yeah, I can tell you. Well, <clears throat> it's in the game changer here. It's on 51 now, okay. so it's a little, a little elevated. That's a, 
They sit, they sit there from Thrasher, so he's going to help himself here. Carter Marcantel brings it in to Kevin Hilton. So now a runner on first and second base with two outs. This is Gillespie up to bat with Townley next mark on deck circle. Gillespie's 0 for 1, grounded up, shortstop, last time up. Looks like they got some hamburgers coming out of the concession stand right now. So if you're at the ballpark, go support the concession stand. Ball one there to Gillespie. We know the tradition of Glenmore baseball, and we knew they were going to be a solid club. Coach West does a great job with them. 1-0 here from Henry. Strike there. So now 1-1. One one. So Stafford's coached there for a long time, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. My brother was a college roommate of Larry. and I think, was it Larry that coached, or was it his dad that coached at Glenmore? I, the one that I knew was, I think Larry was, okay. a, yeah, was a little bit older than you. Well, probably, yeah, he a little bit older probably than Probably my yeah. brother graduated in 83, and yeah. he was. Uh, yeah, and the only reason I know him was I worked a year at Cinema Sports, and we sold a few things to him. Unfortunate. Gone too early. Yeah. Two and one here. Him and my brother were in college together, and this was my sophomore year, and they uh, we played Glenmore in the playoffs, and him and Mike and Larry drove in, and Larry had come support his home school, and my brother there for me. See, is this going to be trouble? They actually now, and I, I missed this, but they have – Cohen at first base now and Trey Curley at second. Okay. So a little the change seniors, up there when we were talking to Coach Laney. So so what do we have there, Danny? They uh Lamore had two hits, no runs, two hits, and two runners left on base. Coming up for the Eagles is Hilton, Scott, and LaRue. You're watching Eagle Baseball on 446 Sports. Our mobile banking app is changing the way we bank. Things are getting easier, transactions are getting safer, and you have access. 24 seven. All the functionality of banking you're used to made easier to use anywhere, anytime, and more secure than ever. Simple, seamless, safe. Download our mobile app today. Back to the Eagles Nest. We got Gavin Hilton leaving off, leading off the bottom of the third with uh, Cooper Scott in the next mark on deck circle. Gavin, look, look, get, look, get to get us going on the scorebook today. First pitch ball. Gavin comes in. Getting over 300 for the year in a nine hole spot. Ball two, two and oh. Gavin's held down a solid shortstop all season as well. And had some pitching. Some pitching appearances. Strike one, two and one. Ball three. Yeah, three and one count. Looking for something to drive here. If it's not there, 
We can wait on another one. A little out. So that's a walk for uh, for Gavin Hilton. Again, for the third inning in a row, the Eagles get the leadoff runner on base. Cooper Scott up to bat with Cohen LaRue and the X mark on deck circle. Cooper singled his last time up, hit a line drive in his left field. Ball one. See how aggressive they're going to be on the base path. And there goes Gavin. He hangs on to the base. We get a stolen base, so we get a runner on second base now with nobody out. Thank you, sir. So, uh, and you couldn't handle flexi score. I could not. My gosh. Scorebook, flexi score. Personally, play by play. That would actually, I, I need to, that's actually the Wallace I associate scoreboard, uh, AKA flexi score. But, uh, so we have 2 0 here to Cooper Scott. How did Gavin get on? Gavin Walt. Gavin Walt. 3 okay. 1 count and he drew a walk. Okay. Day job at Collins. So, uh, Need to take that call. Appreciate your patience. That's a shot there. Let's see what happens. So Gavin's going to tag. That's called by the center fielder, and Gavin's going to advance, standing up. So first out of the inning, but that's a good play there on the sacrifice fly. So Gavin's now 90 feet away with uh, Cohen LaRue, who's now your first baseman, up to bat. Carter Mark until the X mark on deck circle. And got dialed in on this is uh was it Thrasher's? Yeah, call? Thrasher's. Thrasher's to pitcher, he hasn't yep. got dialed on, in on him yet. He's, uh, he's been a little different, been a little bit like what uh, Pickering threw and a little soft throwing. Here's, get down. Let's see what happens. That's a foul, foul ball there. It's a Riverside Hospital foul ball. But, uh, and and that, that speed, you know, which you're going to be out in front of it sometimes. But, uh, Gavin can do his job. I mean, Cohen can do his job here. Runner at third base, less than two outs. Something in play. Infield's back. No one hit him, so. Louisiana Lambake walk there, hit by pitch. So let's see what's umpires coming over here. Oh, he's coming to get, get some base. Okay. Didn't know something happened. So Carter Mark can tell up the bat with Drake Aldrin next mark on deck circle. Carter's 0 for 1. He popped up to the first baseman in the first. I wonder how aggressive he's going to be with Cohen. I would think that we're going to probably send, send him sooner rather than later. I don't know if he'll put a hit and run on, but uh, I think he'll probably look to try to get out of the double play situation. Watch that pick. Oh, he's throwing. Okay. Safe there. <laughs> well, could, couldn't tell if the throw was going to be there in time or not, but it looked like Cohen slid into the into the glove tag at the same time and popped up, got away from him. Yeah, Gavin, when the when the ball got away, Gavin looks at Coach Jordan like, ah, oh, should have went, you know, <laughs> but that is part of it. So now That's all right. two runners in scoring position for Carter Marcantel here, and that was a strike, so fixed that on the – Wallace scoreboard, Riverside Hospital foul ball. So now it's 0-2. Thrasher's a battler. He competes. Yeah. He, he's going to make them think. He's, he's gonna, around the zone. Yep. I mean, that's, that's uh, got enough movement on the fastball. It tails away a little bit. And got a decent breaking ball. Enough to keep him off balance. Wind's blowing to, to left field, so. Carter calls timeout here. And that's just, that's a tactic by the pitcher, which, you know, I mean, keep him off balance. Nothing wrong with that. Of course, no pitch clock in high school, but, yeah. you know, that that's turned into a, ah, it's on the end of the field. Yeah, third baseman there who is Nolan Sweat. 
with the put out there. So two outs here for your Eagles with Drake Aldridge up the bat and Ben Wade and your X mark on deck circle. And Coach see if Drake Mark. can't pick up. Coach Marks is <laughs> hanging his head with some of the swings we got going today. So Drake flew out to oh they're gonna open ba open base here. They're gonna put him on. That's that's probably a wise wise decision. But Ben's been swinging well, a hot bat. I say the way Ben's been swinging a bat, they you know might be taking and a that's chance why, here. I mean that's why he's moved up in this spot. Yeah. He's been he's been swinging the bat well enough. Give a little protection. So we'll see if we can make him pay here. Ben singled this last time up. Ben weighed up the bat with Case Butterfield X mark on deck circle. Bases full of Eagles, two outs, bottom of the third. Safe. Stole home. Stolen what? base. Okay. We got that on the, the camera. Stolen base there by Gavin Hilton. It wasn't a suicide squeeze. No. It was a stolen base. What's so. the question here, umpires? So I wonder if he's. So. Yeah, Coach West is not no, happy. He's not. It's, it was, uh, he said the tag wasn't there, Coach. So, which uh, is kind of surprising because the ball was there, but. Uh, of course, the umpire has the view, and like I said, we might. I tell you, I questioned the one last right, night. Right, right. <laughs> whenever, when when Grant slid under and uh, was safe on the pass ball or on the wild pitch, and uh, we, I looked at it this morning, and it was it was accurate. So your Eagles up one nothing now with Aldridge at second base and Cohen. So a coach wanted that run. Yeah, he did. He wanted that run to break the seal and. See if we can get something going here. Some, a chance to put up a crooked number. And so Ben's now 0 and 2 after taking the first pitch on the steal. And then the Riverside High School foul ball and see if he can come up with 0 2 hit here. Good out of there. That one bounced to the left side. So 1 and 2. So in that, Ben just stays in the box. Doesn't, I mean, that's. Yep. Gives uh, Gavin a little space to make the slide, but otherwise he he, he don't move. One two here. Grounds to third hop. baseman, big hop, and so Ben's out five to three there. But uh, Tree Eagles get a stolen stolen base, uh, st steals home. Gavin Hill steals home to go up one nothing. And what do we have here, Dan? They had one run on uh, no hits and two runners left on base coming up for glenmore townley sweat and coker you're watching eagle baseball 446 sports mobile banking app is changing the way we bank. Things are getting easier, transactions are getting safer, and you have access 24-7. All the functionality of banking you're used to made easier to use anywhere, anytime, and more secure than ever. Simple, seamless, safe. Download our mobile app today. And welcome back to the Eagles Nest here on the campus of Holy Savior Menard in Alexandria, Louisiana. And uh, Mike Henry still on the mound. For your Eagles going into the top of the fourth inning. Let's see if here's a bat. 27. That's Townley up to bat with sweat in your X mark on deck circle. And everybody's getting their reindeer, or their rain gear, coach. There we go. Fortunately, we don't have to worry about that tonight. Yeah. Townley grounded, hit a ground ball to second. It was, uh, or actually he would hit the pop-up to, to error on the second baseman that last time up. 
Ground yeah, ball here to Gavin. Gavin to LaRue. So six to three put out there of Townley for your first down of the inning. And see if Mike can get a quick inning. He needs, he needs something to keep his pitch count down here so we can make it a little bit longer. But he's on uh, 56 pitches now. Sweat up the bat with Coker and the X mark on deck circle. Sweat's had a good defensive game at third base. Yeah. Sweat's Solid ball club. Really yeah. good, really good look, ball club. Look young. Yeah. Look young. Which if they're going back down after this season, then look bodes well for them. They were always a perennial power in class B. And then next year. B and C combined, okay. so there won't be a split. Touch. See if Cohen get over there. Looks like that's going to be out of reach of Cohen, but 0-2 now to, to Sweat. Riverside Hospital foul ball there. Cohen had to flip the hat off to get the hair out of the way. <laughs> yeah, senior pitchers. Uh, that was a, <laughs> makes you wonder if they had something holding the Holding the hats on. What do you think Henry's going to throw here? He's been overpowering this bottom lineup with a fastball, but. Yep, there it was. Another Riverside Hospital foul ball. Now would be probably the time that, unless he's going to try to waste the pitch at 0 2, but I mean, he just went up. Seemed like that was trying to be his waste pitch. He might come to a breaking ball now to try to, as they say, change the eye level. Go to pitch here. Outside there. One and two now. Gosh, these games fly. Top of the fourth. Which like I said, it's it's good to try to get this game game in for sure. Play at Glenmore Thursday. And I don't know if you watched the weather, but uh another Riverside Hospital foul ball, but they're actually, and Nicholas was talking about there might be something hanging around yeah. through Thursday. So um, hopefully they can get that one in. Yeah. I'll tell you what, the humidity is back. Yes, it is. Favorite. Last night was was a little bit, a little bit cooler in here, and had the breeze blowing, and the the wind direction maybe is that the difference? Yeah, probably. Yeah. But uh, we were in. Gulf Shores last week. Of course, a little, a little cool front that come through Tuesday, and and uh, I'm not getting in the water regardless. So that didn't bother me. But sitting on the beach was actually pretty comfortable. Ball two there. So now two and two. Sweats working, working the count. He just had to remind us again. That's right. That you were. But uh, when we drove Gulf back Shores. to uh, when we drove back to Pineville on uh, Sunday, open the door. To Unload, Three two now. Unload the truck. Start unloading the truck. Oh, I the missed the pitch. Uh, I think he might have. Oh, did he hit him? I okay. think he did. Yeah. I got you. Okay, so it's hit by pitch there. Okay, yeah. so so sweats on. Now with Coker was actually hit by pitch last time out. Yep. Coker up to bat now with Parks and the X mark on deck circle. One out here. Top of the fourth. I'm sorry, I was got distracted by the hit by the pitch. So, what what happened when you got back to power? No, the humidity. We opened the door and had to start unloading the truck and, and putting things away. It was hot again. <laughs> Welcome back to Louisiana, right? <laughs> one zero pitch here from Henry. Strike one. It's a one and one. It's a take all the way by Coker. He wouldn't. He he was going to make him throw a strike. You want it's gotten a little more. It's going to be a tough close play. He's safe there. Ooh. So he calls, yeah. him, calls him out at second. Yes, he does. Okay, calls him out at second. So we Coach have, is agreeing with him. So I'll, I'll, uh, Fielder's choice is second from Bilbo to Curley for his second out of the inning. And uh, Parks hit that line drive to left field last time up. He's officially 0 for 2, but he's grounded to third and flew out to left field. Hadn't seen a lot of action at shortstop, but he's oh. lose the runner to scoring position now. Coker advances. Coach West making sure that Coker knows to watch the, the pickoff move. 
Fight defense is straight up. 1-0 count here. He wanted to put that one yeah. in the left field perch. <laughs> he was looking at the scoreboard before. <laughs> that was a that was a mean swing, but uh talked about the dimensions here. It's it's not a the lines are not a small high school field. 320, that's a decent size. Pitch. Strike two now, one and two. But dead center's only 350, and so that puts the power. Field line, right field line's pretty good. Uh, that's going to get a down. shot. Let's see what happens that's here. That's going to go down tie the game yep. up. That's going to tie it up. So Coker's coming around to score with a count there on that. that but now we have Holloway up the bat with Bordelon and X-Mark on deck circle. And uh, Michael's not happy giving up that hit. Like you said, he was one, two ahead of him and gives him something too much in the zone. Very good athlete, very good player. You know, Parks, well, from what we've seen tonight. Yep. So let's get this one and go in at 1-1. One, one. So... Henry bluffs back to second, parks back in safely. And ball to one. Ball. Yeah, it's gotten very quiet here. <laughs> <laughs> 1-0 here to Holloway from Henry. At strike one, one and one now. It's, uh, We'll say this, the, the porch is full because it's covered. The, the Menard bleachers over here are full because they're covered, one and one. I think that's got a pitcher warming in the bullpen down there. Looks like Shelton maybe. Let's see here. Yep, J.D. Shelton is your bullpen. Pitch count for Mike's getting up. Two one pitch here, two and two swing and strike there from Holloway. Two two pitch. Oh, and runners leaving. First out hospital foul ball there by Holloway from Holloway. Holloway comes from a. Line of Holloways from Forest Hill. I don't know if you remember Clyde Holloway, the state yeah, representative. Yeah. You know, that would have been his great uncle. Okay. Claude is his grandfather, who's a Holloway, and then Miss Virgie and his aunt Claudette went to school with Marlene and I. Just a great family. Last time we run into them, they were on the lake. Strike out Get there. So, high fastball. Yeah, so. so being State Bank strike out there from Henry to retire to side. What do we have here, Danny? So Glenmore scratches across a run with uh, one hit and one runner left on base. Coming up for the Eagles, Butterfield, Bilbo, and Lions. You're watching Eagle Baseball 446 Sports. There are some things in life you can fix, and some things are better left to the professionals. When your vehicle has transmission problems, what will you do? Go where you know. Go where you know, certified transmission. Time for our red, white, and cool summer event at Southern Air Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Right now, you can save on a new energy saving system. No money down, 0% interest, and no payments till June 2024. Call Southern Air Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing or visit us online. And yeah, welcome back to Eagles Nest here where... Thrasher comes out for his fourth inning of work here in the bottom of the fourth. So we have uh, Case Butterfield up the bat with Nate Bilbo and the X mark on deck circle. And uh, what are we, how many hits does the Eagles have? Two. Two hits. Two hits. Ben had uh, a hit and 
Cooper let off the game with a hit. In those first three innings, we've uh, had the leadoff runner and only been able to manage to score one of them so far. See if Case can't get it started here. So, you know, this is good baseball. I mean, it really is. We've watched a lot of really good high school baseball this year, being a part of this, and uh, and so far the Eagles have been able to come on, come out on the winning side here. The last eleven. That's a oh, oh hang up for second yeah, base. Yeah, just a little off the end of the bat there. So, so. He lines out there to Gillespie. Nate Bilbo up to bat with uh, Trey Curley in the X mark on deck circle. So that's a so Curley comes in to hit where Lines was. Okay. I, I felt bad about picking that. I really wasn't intending to pick on Trey the other night. Boy, whenever I asked him what his walk up song was and. I said, because we hadn't heard it yet, and I hear the guys clowning him in the back. So sorry about that, Trey, but we'll get to hear you get through. Oh, good pick, a second baseman. Yep. So he's had a good game as well. That was good back in there by Gillespie. So Gillespie's two for two in this inning. So Curly up to bat now with Hilton in the X mark on deck circle. Actually, Coop's down there warming up as well. Okay. Game way it is, you probably trying to make sure you win it. You got a day off in between. Not sure Cohen will be able to throw much, but he might could go Thursday. But. Ball one, so one and one here to Trey Curley. He can't come out and come up with a two out hit here. Or two out walk would work as well. Two and one. Something to turn the lineup over. Two and two. Now, have you ever played at Glenmore High School? Yep. I did? Okay. Yep. I only played summer ball, so. I'd we, like to say we, uh, we lost because we played Glenmore at Glenmore High School because. And we played that at a regulation. At the time, <laughs> Brightfield didn't have a fence. Yep, yep. that's. And yeah. our catcher. Ooh, a, wake up a, over there. Like Coach West tried to make a snag, or maybe that wasn't Coach West, but our it's catcher, a dangerous Riverside Hospital foul ball there. Our catcher hit two balls that I can promise you would have been out of this park. And. They were long fly balls up by the flop. Ball four. Good eye there, Curly. So, Louisiana Land Bank walk by based on balls by Trey Curly. He brings up Gavin Hilton here with two outs in the bottom of the fourth with Cooper Scott in the X mark on deck circle. Wind up lose that game four to three. And, uh, but, yeah, Will hit probably two that probably went 340, 350 right field. And, uh, they were both run down. Ball one there to Gavin. It's amazing, the memories. <laughs> that must have been just normal for that time because at Forest Hill, where I went to school, we didn't, of course, when I was elementary, middle school, strike one there. To Hill. We didn't have an outfield fence. Oak Hill did not have an outfield fence. So Watermark did not have an outfield fence. I don't know if you played at Watermark. Nope. nope. Never heard of it, actually. actually it's, it's, it's Northwood now. Northwood, okay. okay. So. Riverside Hospital foul ball. And, uh, those guys out there getting some very impressive yes, upgrades yes. with the some tax money yep, coming in. New tax revenue that's coming in from the Clico. Yep, it was uh, district district rivals back then. Of course, they were a little bit better in basketball than they were in baseball. But I guess that was a little high. That, yeah. Nobody's nobody's complaining from the 
from Blimbor, so they must have seen the same thing. They look mighty close from here. I thought Coach Jordan's wife might have come been coming up here I for was an interview. Put her on the put her on the headset. That wasn't full. Okay, this is, is full, full now. Yeah. Okay. Pitcher catcher thought they had that one. It's close for sure. So three two here. So Curly's going to be off. Ball four. So, so I remember about Wettermark was. Of course, I was a little bit like uh, Ronnie when he said that he uh, pitched in the playoff game. Didn't have pitch count back then. Probably two through 214 pitches. Oh, wow. uh, you know, he said, well, so district, for whatever reason, we had a back back game. We had to go to Hornbeck and play Hornbeck and then turn around and play Watermark. I pitched five inning no hitter against Hornbeck and uh, on the Monday. And then the Tuesday, we went to Watermark and Starting pitcher started struggling, and I come in and pitch the last five innings of that game. That Jeez. don't happen these days, but ball one there to Cooper Scott. Scott up to bat with Colin Luru and the X Mark on Dixer. Was that was Watermark in voice? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. okay. I actually played junior high basketball at that 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 gym, um, right across the tracks there. It was my junior year that. Uh, <sighs> Get out. Ooh. Okay. Let's see if we can make this make this pay here. Yeah, it was Riverside Hospital foul ball there. That's a tough play. Yeah. I mean, you're trying to, you know, it wasn't very high, so he wasn't able to camp under it. So very difficult play there for the catcher, but Gillespie, but Watermark, uh, Watermark basketball that year, my junior year, they won the district, and I think we actually finished third that year in district, and then. We went on to beat them in the playoffs and oh, well. made, the, made the finals that year and finished runner-ups. When I was in high school in the early 90s to mid-90s, uh, Northwood had a very good ball, two there, two and one to Cooper Scott. Very good basketball yeah. team. And they and, still do. I mean, yeah. They got a pretty good program over there mm -hmm. right now. Them in Atlanta were yep. the yep. – we're very strong in basketball. Of course, obviously Peabody, but of the smaller schools, it right. was Atlanta and Northwood. Trey Curley at second. Gavin Hilton at first. 2 1 here to Scott. I guess he I guess he doesn't like the He don't like the river. Yeah, he don't like the river. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta well, touch was, the black for yeah, him. So. That's mighty close, but uh it is three one here. Coop's one for two. Pitching time out here. I don't, think they, I don't think they had anybody warming, so I think this is just a settle down moment. So you can see the bullpen out yeah. there? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Just a settle down moment. Yeah, because there were two outs and nobody on and two back to back walks. You right. don't want to, I'm sure Coach West doesn't want to lose him to lose Scott with this one. And again, you don't want to leave it hanging out there either. No. Coop's shown the. Flair for the dramatics. We'll have to walk off against Rose Pine in the bottom of the Were seven. we here? Do you think? <laughs> Miss <laughs> Becky ducked that one. Yeah. <laughs> Ended up under her car. So, uh, yeah, what an exciting, exciting game that was. So, to reset it here, we've got Curly at second, Hilton at first, Cooper Scott up to bat, three, three balls, one strike, two outs. Bottom of the fourth. Some drive here, Coop. Oh, we got a walk. Base is loaded now for Cohen LaRue with Carter Mark and telling you X Mark on deck circle. Cohen's been hot as of late, and we talked about him since he's moved up to that two hole. He's uh he's hit the ball pretty well. Yeah, I was picking on him the other day. This sounds like an 80s song. It might just be a remake of some sort, but see what Thrasher's going to throw here. Cohen's 0 for 1. Flew out the center field. Ball He's one having there. trouble finding the zone right now. So Did he? So how many times can you visit in high school, this or does is, that matter? Be, yeah, yeah, no, you, got, uh, you only got two visits, so. Unless somebody warmed up that I didn't see. 
You know, it looks like it looks like he's the bringing shortstop. Parks. Yeah. yeah, bringing Parks in. So, see what kind of adjustments we have here. So we can stick around. Yeah, we'll take a break. You're watching Eagle Baseball 446 Sports. Hi, I'm Kimberly Harrell, Certified Residential Appraiser. I am currently a leading provider of appraisal services for mortgage lending, employee relocation, estate planning, and community property settlements. My experience in real estate over the past 13 years and currently serving as president of the Greater Central Louisiana Realtors Association has given me a clear understanding of the real estate world and the ever-changing market we live in today. For any of your valuation needs, give me Kimberly Harrell a call. Welcome back to Eagles Nest, where we have a plenty of home care pitch and change here. So we have Parks coming in for Thrasher. Thrasher goes to first, and Sweat goes to short. Two balls now. Trying to see. Parks got a little, little velo on him. It'll be a little different adjustment. Borderline goes to second. Strike one there, so. Kind of change my stuff here. So Thrasher to first. There's a Gillespie that actually went to. Well, that might have been a little low, but it's like Gillespie went to shortstop. Thought it was number eight, but it's number six. Okay, I think we've got these reset. So three quarter motion, Danny. Yeah. Yeah. A little short arm. Catcher wanted that one. Looked a little out. I think last night the umpire would have would have rung him up. He'd done a little shimmy back, a yeah, couple a steps. Dub and, step and yeah. what do you call that again? Dub step. Dub step. Yeah. Okay. Full count. Two outs. Runner should be off. Ball, ball four. four. So if I'm correct, that's a run off of no hits on the last four bats, correct? Yep. For your Eagles to take. Two to one lead here. Carter Markintel up the bat now with Drake Aldridge next mark on deck circle. And the parts come in so far exclusively fastballs. Riverside Hospital foul ball for strike one there. Carter Markintel. Couple dads getting a little excited yep, yep, here. Yep. Wanting Carter to. Uh, listen, excuse me. I'm gonna swing and then I better get out of the way. Yeah. It looked like that might have. I think that was a slider. Maybe it was uh, moving a little bit. Maybe. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell with his motion though. O two here to Mark Till. See what Parks has for him. Out. Goes down swinging, but before that, your Eagles take a two to one lead in the bottom of the fourth. What do we have here, Danny? Uh, Eagles pick up one run on no hits. We had three runners left on base. Coming up for Glenmore, Borderline, Gillespie, Thrasher, or any changes. You're watching Eagle Baseball on 446 Sports. In central Louisiana, you might see me at the ballparks or soccer fields, or we might cross paths at the grocery store. I'm your local Farm Bureau insurance agent, your local expert when it comes to protecting what you love and depend on. I'm Jason Hall. 
learn more about how Farm Bureau Insurance can save you time and money. So talk to Hawk at 318-791-HAWK and let me help you protect your biggest investments. Real service, real people. Farm Bureau Insurance. BK Distributors is proud to support high school athletics on 446 Sports. BK is the one-stop shop for trophies, banners, awards, letter jackets, and just about anything award-related. And now, welcome BK Apparel and BK Promotions to the family. For all your spirit apparel needs and anything you need to brand your business, when you think of anything you need with your name on it, think BK. Check them out on Facebook or at bkdistrib.com. BK Distributors, apparel and promotions in Pineville. And we're back here at the Eagles Nest here on the campus, Holy Savior Menard in Alexandria, Louisiana. We have Cooper Scott, Lane Yap Home Care Pitch and Change here, which brings Jaden Williams in. Boy, we have a bunch of these now, Danny. Yeah, with the, we'll, we'll that's, get rid of the other ones later. He's so uh, top. He's let's get, uh, let's get Jaden. There's Jaden. Look at Jaden. So he comes in for Scott at center field there. And uh, everything else looks to stay the same. They're doing the doing their dance again on the well, we have to ask these, these two guys in here what exactly that dance is for. That might be a trade secret. Might yeah, not be yeah. able to answer that. I'm not sure that, right about now. Coach is appreciating the dancing, but you know, <laughs> probably uh, a little flat tonight. And it shows how important this game is. He's bringing Cooper in here. Why oh, is my inning not yes. resetting here? Yeah, that's. Still shows me two. Okay, so yeah, well, let me see if I can fix it. Wallace I Associates scoreboard's a little off right now. Just see if we can't reset that. It is correct on the tablet, but it's, if you're just joining us, it's two to one. Eagles on top, top of the fifth inning with Bordelon up the bat for the Wildcats, Gillespie and the X mark on deck circle. First pitch from Scott, strike one. So good start there for Coop. There we go. Hit here. So, so that's a Gillespie with a, no, I'm sorry, that's Bordelon with the single here with top of the fifth inning. Now with Gillespie up to bat and uh, good, good piece of hitting there. Just hit it where it's pitched. Right center, right over Curly's head. So, um, Thrasher, your first new, your first baseman now is in your X mark on deck circle. Got a runner right coming in. in. Courtesy runner coming in, or a pitch runner, excuse me. Is it number one? Trip Thomas. It's like Trip Thomas is your pitch runner here for for Bordelon. Bordelon is two for three on the day. He's singled in the first. Strike one there from Cooper. I'm saying this is this is how important this game is for Coach Coach Marks. He he brings Cooper in, to, trying to trying to secure the win. Cooper pitched an inning last night through nine pitches. Ball one outside, one and one. So Gillespie squared around there. Gillespie's been his counterpart and a catcher, and he's done a really good job for the Wildcats tonight. Riverside Hospital foul ball makes it one and two. Combination of trying to figure Cooper out, but also just trying to put the ball in play to advance the runner. Two and two now, ball's a little high. Ben bluffing over to first base. Get Thomas back. Doesn't have a big lead. Two and two here. Outside, three and two. Let's see what Cooper throws at him here. Remember, LaRue's at first, not Aldridge. All four. So. Nope, nope. nope. We three. missed a pitch. We did miss a pitch. Okay. I had it full as well. So. Hmm. 
Okay, so. No complaints from anybody, so we no. were, apparently we were wrong. Yeah. The Riverside Hospital foul ball to the right over here. So Gillespie, 3 2 pitch. I see it. Shot back up. So two singles for the Wildcats here with no outs. Running on first and second now. And Piece of hitting from yeah. Gillespie. Looking nobody out. Left handed hitter up here. I don't, uh, he is. He's actually one for two for today, so he, he showed. Outside there for ball one. So. See if Coop can That's right. Day, so. That's right. I mean, like you said, it's got to be on the black at least for him to call it a strike. Two oh here. That's uh, a strike right down the middle. Like he took something off of that. Big part of the plate, and uh, that leads to batters getting good swings on you. Overside Hospital foul ball. Glenmore. Yeah, what was that? The, was that the Nactor Central or Lusher? Or, or Lusher I, game. I, I that, or, yeah, one of the two. Here we go. Play. Yeah, um, Coach LaRue was telling me he bought a new $6. He paid for those. Okay. Not as much as Ronnie pays no, for the Rougarou baseballs, but try to get him, try to get him fishing for that one. Yeah, I'm not sure he don't want to. He hasn't been wanting to throw that slider, the left-hander. Three-two here, run on first and second. That's him. That one goes. That's going to be over Carter's head for a double right now. Yeah, so tie the game. Thomas come in to score. Ties the game here. Double off a of Thrasher there, which brings up Gillespie. And Townley's in your X mark on deck circle. And Coach back Turney back going to out to talk to Cooper. Glenmore. They have uh, strung together three hits in a row. And something uh, Eagles haven't been able to do, but clutch it. And so that ball was hit well, too. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it yeah. was. Most parks. Most high school parks, I think that might be yeah. out. Like you said, it's not too friendly on on the down the lines for the hitters in this park. I think he's talking defense. Probably a little bit of both. Probably trying to settle Cooper. Like I said, he's not getting the pitches that he's wanting, and so that leads you to putting the ball over the plate. And that's I think that's just what's happened here is that uh, he's giving them too much too much to hit. And uh, but then yeah, then it's probably. Looks like they're playing in on the corners. I don't see. Uh, new position in. for new position for Cohen. All right, yep, the infielders are in. At first. Trying to cut the runner off. This is Townley up to bat. Cooper Scott with the pitch. Townley's grounded out and flew out. Ball oh, outside. Up, up, in. Now, of course, this is, I guess, you look at what Glenn Moore did. They had the open base, and uh, but that was, that was oh, yeah. Oh, oh. So that's going to score one for sure. Yep, scores one for Glenn Moore, which makes it three to two. Now runner on first and first and third. Townley up the bat with Sweat and X mark on deck circle. Good piece of hitting back, one more. I think uh, gave him a hit. I think Cohen would like to have that one back. Yeah. He said no excuses, new position, playing up. Probably came out a little faster than what he was thinking. That's going to score another one. Turns double play. Looks like the coach is arguing yeah. here, so. I think if I read him right, he's trying to uh, say he pulled the ball out of his glove and tagged him with the glove. Okay, let's see. But we're going we're gonna to score this double play for now. Yep. 
It did score runs on, so it's a fielder's choice as well, right? Yep. Okay. So nobody on base. Two outs for the That's where it stays. Eagles. Four to two now. Glenmore on top of the Eagles. This is sweat up the bat with Coker in the X mark on deck circle. All cat bats have come alive in this fifth yeah. inning. Yeah. Strike one there from Coop. Ground ball here to Curly. Let's see if Curly can. Yep, Curly makes the play to LaRue. So four to three there to get the Eagles out of inning. What do we have here, Danny? Glenmore scores three runs on four, four hits, and nobody left on base. Coming up for the Eagles. We're going to have Drake Aldridge, Ben Wade, and Case Butterfield. You're watching Eagle Baseball, 446 Sports. Welcome back to the Eagles Nest here. See if Drake Aldridge can get this crowd going a little bit. Uh, got some work to do for the Eagles. Yeah. Uh, hadn't been in this situation in a while, so they uh, coming up on the playoffs. They probably not what coach was wanting, but was probably like to see us dig deep and got three at bats left to score a few runs. Riverside Hospital foul ball there for Drake, so. We uh, Ben Wade and the X mark on deck circle. Bottom of five, uh, bottom of the fifth inning. Parks has come in and throwing strikes. Ball one there. Nick Drake tried to stay in there, got a little. That sound was a little high, so two and one. Eagles come out for senior night. A little flat so far. Glenmore is trying to make them pay. Foul ball there. Riverside has to a foul ball. So two and two. Drake has tape on his. I don't know if shoes coming apart or if that's just a something's had all season. Hadn't really paid attention. Two and two. Get through that's their ball. Hit. Good hit there. And now swing by Drake. Yeah. Lead off single. Good start. Ben Wade up the bat now with uh, Case Butterfield next mark on deck circle. Drake's already been run for once, so I think they can do it again. Oh, so if he's run for twice, that means he's okay. Yeah, okay. Second he's time. replaced. Okay. Gotcha. And Drake usually runs for himself anyway. So, come on, Ben. Here we go. Ball one low. That was a good piece hidden from Drake. Yes, that was, it was. That was, you know, we talked about it earlier, but he he, he likes to go to that way opposite way. But that one was probably over the plate, and he inside out and drove it into right field. Ball two. Ben, ben. Don't, don't be a hero here, Ben. We'll take it off the. Take it off the sleeve. I thought he tried. I don't know if that was. <laughs> have to go back and look at that. That's well. We'll take that yep. one. Been shot there by Ben. Barreling balls up. Man. Yep. So now Ben Wade with a single. So now runners on first and second with 
nobody out for the Eagles and Case Butterfield. Now he was trying to bunt Case earlier. I don't think he's gonna. <laughs> he hadn't. He didn't look comfortable. No, doing he did it. not. You mentioned it. He didn't look comfortable doing it. So we'll say this though. Parks throws one that's probably easier to bunt. Yeah. He throws a pitch that's yeah. probably. But I, but I'm I'm thinking we're swinging here. I mean. Zimmer had the same situation last time, and they, yeah. they played for a crooked number, and they got it. So. Yeah, that's right. Case Butterfield up the bat with Nate Bill on the X mark. Squares around. That's, oh, that's a good bunt, too. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Force throws him. it away. Yep. That's going to score, score two. two. <laughs> He's going to score two. The ball got caught up in the grass. Yep. <laughs> Brings Jay Guillory around, so Jay Guillory pinch. Oh, courtesy ran for Ben, so that ties the game up for Eagles on the air on the bunt. So, well, what do I know, Danny? Hey. <laughs> what did I say? I said. I mean, he put down a good bunt, bunt. <laughs> and actually, you know what? Glenmore had the had the right defense yes, to play did. on, and they just didn't didn't execute. Yeah, he paused for a second, probably waiting for his man to get over there, and now we're four to four. Miss Marks here. Yeah, Miss Marks here here for your 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 interview for the game. We we could we could talk bad about Jordan if you want. <laughs> so that's right, that's right. She's up here getting her phone after it was charged, but that was a ball one there to Nate Bilbo. Strike one. Cases on second base and Trey Curley is your next mark on deck circle. I had to see if they might have been changing that. Riverside Hospital foul the foul ball there. So one and two to Nate. That's the way to respond. Yeah. That's the way to respond. Yeah. I mean that's nothing to take away from Glenmore once you feel like you're maybe the better team and and you you let them hang around as long as you have things like the last inning happen and give them the moment pitch there about uh, parts he you know I, I just I, I do I do like how these these wildcat pitchers are battling they're making it very difficult Trey comes up for his second time to bat he walked the last time up do you see how many at bats he's had, or can you? Is that not? Uh, yeah, it's there. Okay. I, I'm, unless he hit it in a away game. Yeah. He, he it should be number two, huh? Yeah. But I'll, let me. Strike one swing in there. I think he may have played in that St. Louis game whenever coach made a bunch of third games and made a bunch of subs. He's only got one official at bat. Okay. But, so this, not, but he has had two walks. That means okay. he, yeah. he does have uh, – so he's been at plate three times. So. Yeah, so this is fourth AB. like to see him on senior day get him a hit. Strike two there to one, two. Way to battle there. Riverside Hospital foul ball. So one, two, still. Look like the breaking ball there from Parks. And Trey caught it off the end of the bat, but he was able to hang on. Good eye there. So two and two now. Also, want to say big thanks to Kristen Butterfield for getting the photos together and sending to us and the the senior bios. Good work there, Riverside Hospital foul ball. And she's been she's been our go-to. You know. Oh, that must have got a car. We got people turning around here. I hope it wasn't the white GMC that they asked know. me to park over there. Uh, yeah. Some people giving an ooh and an ah. Two two here at Curly. Yeah. 
supposed to take there. Yeah, he, that was in strike two, or strike one was like that too. Yeah. So, so all right. Parks battling like like he has been. So, let's see what Gavin come up with. Case Butterfield still at second base, two outs, bottom of the fifth. Gavin, one time one of the hottest hitters on the team, or the hottest hitter on the team, dropped off a little bit lately, but let's see if he can get it going again. He officially don't have a bat, an at bat. Strike one there, Check foul swing. ball, Riverside Hospital foul ball. So he's walked uh, both times up. Take a walk to turn this, turn the lineup over. Outside, so one and one. According to their roster, Danny. 13 players. I mean, of course, that might just be the varsity squad. Right. Had a really good season as well. Brasher running for that one, but it goes out of par, out of the play. Riverside Hospital foul ball there for strike number two. So one and two here. Tied four to four. One two pitch from Parks. See so if that ball gets down or. Nope. Center fielder makes a play there who happens to be Tristan Townley. So what do we have there on that inning, Danny? Eagles pick up two runs on two hits, one runner left on base. Coming up for Glenmore, Coker, Parks, and Holloway. You're watching Eagle Baseball 446 Sports. And welcome back to Eagles Nest here. The campus Holy Savior Menard in Alexandria, Louisiana. We have a change here. It looks like we have Drake Aldridge coming in for for Curly. For, for Curly. So we're going to have Drake at first. We're going to have uh, Cohen move to second. And we have Jay Guillory coming in. Jay Guillory coming in the center field for, for um, Jaden Williams. So few changes there here in the top of the sixth inning. And for, for Glenn Moore, we have number five, who is actually a pinch. No, number five. Yeah, no, uh, Coker. Coker's at the bat with Parks and the X mark on deck circle. Coach Jordan telling the umpire about the changes that are being made. Cooper Scott staying on the mound. Our executive producer just sent a text here. It looks like. Opelousas High School football coach files a lawsuit uh, for the forfeit, you know, the forfeit of the state championship, the football. So that's interesting. I'll have to read that whenever we, when we come back. Chuck just sent us that okay. information. So looks like our Wallace Associate scoreboard is rolling with us well. I want to thank Valex Federal Credit Union, our title sponsor for. All of 446 Sports. And we want to thank our Menard sponsors as well. Appreciate you guys for allowing us to do this. My coaches, Coach Jordan, for allowing us. There's, no There's a shot. Let's see. 
Yep. Well hit ball. Yep. Carter's yeah. there for that one. All four of his have been well hit, huh, Danny? Mm -hmm. yep. yep. So he's barreled them all up. So two outs here. A lot better start in this inning for Cooper than the way it was. It looks like we have Holloway up to bat now with Bordelon in the X mark on deck circle. Four to four is your score, top of the sixth. Holloway's officially one for three. Okay. So a strikeout, a single, and a ground out to third. Strike one there from Cooper. How much is that? How much does coming right back and getting two runs help yeah, that's Cooper's? Huge. I mean, that's that's you know momentum. Brian. You know, it, every sport has the the momentum, and uh, if the longer you let it go with the other team, the worse it gets for you. So coming back and and, and, and at least tying the game back up is massive. So as a pitcher, I mean. That's I never pitched in high school. I mean, that's that's just I mean that's big, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, your your confidence is like okay. Well, mm -hmm. I'm not not losing the game right now. It's so being State Bank strikeout there by Cooper Scott. Yeah. So what do we have there in that inning? Well, that was uh, looks like the first uh, up and down order inning for for either team, and uh, so no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. Coming up for the Eagles. We got uh, the leadoff of Scott, LaRue, and Markenton. You're watching Eagle Baseball 446 Sports. Time for our red, white, and cool summer event at Southern Air Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Right now, you can save on a new energy saving system. No money down, 0% interest, and no payments till June 2024. Call Southern Air Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing or visit us online. In central Louisiana, you might see me at the ballparks or soccer fields, or we might cross paths at the grocery store. I'm your local Farm Bureau insurance agent, your local expert when it comes to protecting what you love and depend on. I'm Jason Hall. Learn more about how Farm Bureau insurance can save you time and money. So talk to Hall at 318-791-HAWK and let me help you protect your biggest investments. Real service, real people. Farm Bureau insurance. There are some things in life you can fix, and some things are better left to the professionals. When your vehicle has transmission problems, what will you do? Go where you know. Go, go where you know, certified transmission. And welcome back to Eagles Nest here. We have a laying up home care pitch and change here for the Glenmore Wildcats. We have number six. Who comes from shortstop is Wyatt Gillespie. Takes over for Parks on the on the bump, and Parks goes right back to to shortstop. So I think that's all the changes for them. And uh, Gillespie has a good little little motion on him, and he he's got some movement on the fastball, little tails on him, and had a good good breaking ball. You know, I was wondering if when they got that four two lead and they brought Parks in, uh, if they weren't. Uh, Trying to secure a win Going only tonight, and mm -hmm. and see now that it's tied back up, he might be. I, I'm, I, you know, what makes me curious is what he's got available to throw Thursday, and uh, if he, now that it's tied back up, wonder if he's not throwing off, but at least trying to maybe save an arm for Thursday too. It's Cooper Scott up the bat now with Cohen Larue, X mark on deck circle. Coop is. Uh, one for two, single in the first, flew out to center field, walked the last time. Strike one there from And that goes back to how big, how big that foul ball he hit. The catcher couldn't corral over here. Yeah. He winds up walking there, and then we score on a walk on the next end. That would have been the third out. Ball there from Gillespie, so one and one. I'm amazed. That we've not had any more rain than what we had. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, which I will say, we got an inch at the house, inch at the nursery. So now, Colin Larue up to bat with Carter Mark until the X Mark on deck circle. And uh, I know the water table needs it. Yep. You know, we're not quite out of the drought yet, believe it or not. Uh, although it seems like we've received a lot of rain. Uh, we're getting the, closer, though. <laughs> I know the plants need it. My grass did not. Yeah. Because <laughs> well. I have not, I have not been able to mow my grass. So. I don't have grass right now. I've got weeds. You know, oh, okay. the, the summer heat, what we had uh, in the drought, pretty almost killed most of my St. Augustine. You are correct. Oh, Coop straight still in there. Yep. Hold on to the bag. 
Good job there. So Cooper Scott now in scoring position. And that's a ball one. Cooper shaking. Time to shake that shoulder or lat injury off. I was looking at the umpire here to see, so it's 1 0. I don't think so. So you try to bunt him over here, I, or do you just you swing away? You know what? In this game, I probably I probably would bunt him in this situation. But because uh, we go to the top of, if we can score this one run, we go to the top of the seventh with a lead. Yeah, I'm not going to guess anymore because I was wrong on the, on the case Butterfield bunt. And we're not button, and that's a good get in. Yes, fair ball. That's fair ball. That's going to score. That's going to score. Cooper Scott. Cooper Scott comes down third, and Cohen stand up double here. So your Eagles take the lead, and that's five a, to four in the bottom of the sixth inning. That's why I'm not coaching. <laughs> so basically, Larue replaces Scott at second base, and Carter Marcantil up to bat with Drake Aldridge next mark on deck circle. Carter's officially 0 for 3. Two fly outs and strikeout. We'll get Carter going for the stretch, too. That's, That's a shot there. That's going to score. That's going to see what the kind of arm center fielder has. Yeah, I think. Uh, LaRue's coming in for that. Uh, gives him six runs here now in the in the game. And Carter Marcantel with a single there. So no outs here. So, three, three hits back to back yep. to back. Yep. That's kind of like the Glenn Moore's yep. fourth, fourth inning, but uh, he's getting a little bit too much of the plate. Drake Aldridge up the bat now with Ben Wade and your X mark on deck circle. A freeze game going on from Pitcher. I don't know if the coach is talking to him. Power. Uh, I don't know if the catcher got the signal. Gotcha. Ball one to Drake. So Eagles come back to tie it in the fifth inning in the bottom of the fifth at four to four and then take a two run lead here so far in the bottom of the sixth. Three back-to-back -back hits from Scott, LaRue, and Markintel. And now Drake's 2-0 at the plate. Looking for his pitch here. And I'm going to say they haven't scouted Drake because... Yeah, the way the second baseman's playing. I, mean, I know he's... Carter's trying to steal here and safe and almost slides by, but uh, I'm, I'm wondering if uh, you remember the very first scrimmage you and I went and watched the Eagles mm -hmm. at Tioga. What did Carter do? Slid in the <laughs> slid in the second <laughs> head first. Yeah. After the shoulder injury, and Mama came and told Dad that when he gets off the field, you remind him how he's supposed <laughs> to slide, and uh, maybe it's changed now, but. Of course, he really didn't touch much of the base with the with the front arm. That was 3-0, and he's letting him swing, huh? Uh, he no, the last one's okay, I'm two sorry. Two. Okay, 2-2, two two, sorry. Yeah. I was watching the stolen base. So Mark and Tell now in scoring position. Two runs. I'd like to tack on a few more. Glenn Moore's got a good part of their lineup coming up. Yes. That's unlike Drake. No, you know, he he was fooled on that one. You know, so good pitch. Aldridge goes down swinging. See, Ben Wade can't pick him up. Ben had a Ben had a hit the last day. Bat. He's he's two for three on the day, mm -hmm. and uh, he's only well, he two for three last night. So four for six in the last day, two days. Yep. So Ben up to bat with Case Butterfield next mark on deck circle. Mark and tell still a second. And the 
pitch here from Gillespie. Over Ben's head for ball one. <laughs> Same two teams Thursday night will be at Glenmore. We will not cover that one. But, uh, Glenmore is not a bad drive on 165 South for the Eagle fans to go down and support the Eagles on the road. And then, like I said on Monday, right? Yes, sir. And then we'll playoff run starts. Yeah, Buckeyes number two. Yes, in, in the division, division two. Yep. Not uh, select. Yep. One one here. Pitch there from Gillespie. Ben was a little overzealous. I thought it was probably a little up in the zone. He wanted that one bad. You're seeing the ball well, you wanna you wanna swing. Side hospital fell ball. Boy, that's mighty close to that white GMC <laughs> back there. When I see people keep looking, that means it's going, but there are a lot of vehicles back there yeah, tonight. Yeah. tonight so. Senior festivities, senior night festivities, so people park close. Now, why did I park back there? Yeah, because it was supposed to be raining, rain, right? right? <laughs> Tell me. That's going to be a goal. Oh, Boy, what a play by the third baseman there. Yeah. Excellent play by the third baseman who should still be Nolan Sweat. That was a good play. He had he had Carter fooled on that throw over. So now that eliminates Mark Cotill from second. Have been on first with a fielder's choice. And we're going to have Matt. No, it's going to be Scroggs. Scroggs, courtesy running now for Ben. Yeah, that was a good play by third baseman. He, uh, Very creative. Well, I mean, that's you get aggressive team like Menard. Yeah. That's going to take bases on you. And you, you, uh, you didn't give the look back first. He gave the fake throw to, mm -hmm. to first and then. Had him off. That's yeah, a Crenshaw nice. sighting. Matthew over here. Chris Grog's back. On the pickoff move from Gillespie. First pitch here to Case, and it's at bat. Very quiet out there, Danny. Yep. Very quiet. Strike one. Two outs here, bottom of the sixth inning. But one pitch to Butterfield here. Get down, ball. Good play. No, great right play fielder. there. That's right fielder. That's uh, Braden, Holl Braden Holloway. Great play there by Holloway for the third out of the inning. And uh, what do we have here, Danny? Well, the Eagles pick up two runs on three hits with one runner left on base. Coming up for Glenmore, Bordelon, Gillespie, and Thrasher. You're watching Eagle Baseball 446 Sports.
There's been a Jones family sighting here. Uh, Jake and Mary Jones. Uh, Mary's one of my co-workers from Doug Young Nursery. And Jake and their daughter is at Tech with, with Magnano. And uh, she's in her freshman year there. JC, hope she might be watching the broadcast. And their son, JR, is still, I think he's an eighth grader at Glenmore. So they've been Wildcats. Oh, there's a play there from Gavin Hilton. Hilton to Drake Aldridge for the first out. That retires Bordelon for the first out of this top of the seventh. So Wildcats down to two outs. You got a, just got a text from an executive producer. He was sending me the radar. Okay. A little closer, but hopefully we can get out of this pretty quickly. That was a good start. Yep. So now we have Gillespie up to bat with Thrasher in your X mark on deck circle. Cooper Scott, yeah. Still Cooper's, Cooper's in line for the win. If he can close it out here. Strike one there. And we got time. I'll tell you mentioned about the crowd earlier and how quiet it got, you know, playing in college. Sometimes you strike two there. You don't get a you don't get a crowd, but uh we made a trip to play Loyola out of New Orleans. Okay. And uh, we, we, we had two fans, my <laughs> wife and the catcher's wife, both named Becky. Oh, wow. Ooh, ring him up. So being straight, State Bank strike out there by Cooper Scott for out number two. So Wildcats down to the last out here last. See if uh, Thrasher, who's Thrasher. battled all night. Thrasher hit a Hit a bomb out in the right field yeah. last time up. Yeah. But uh, still have Carter kind of playing a little shallow. Yeah. So. Ooh, good pitch. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're playing uh, playing Loyola. They don't have a field on campus, so we're playing at uh, Audubon, which is right. Riverside Hospital might foul not ball. Get this in. Cooper's going quick. Yeah, but, we uh, we have time if it if it ends. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, Cooper's ready on the mound. Let's see. We'll finish this up. Go to here for Thrasher. Yeah. I'm a little outside, so trying to get him chased, but he didn't. One and two now. Still outside. Two and two. But, uh, he's not going to give him anything in. He, he don't. He, he don't like to throw that slider to left-handers. I don't know. He's been hit hard by that. Exclusively fastball so far, and then last at bat. Thrasher fouling that one off. So. Oh, Little that's number a there. Let's play. see what's going to happen here. Nate. Got him. Got him. Yes, Eagles sir. win. Eagles win. Eagles win. Had to wait for the umpire to, <laughs> to bring him call. up there. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, Danny, Danny saw it from here. So uh, your Eagles now improved to 9-0, and oh, and that should lock up the, up the district championship. championship. So congratulations to, to the coaching staff and the Eagles. 18-8 and eight overall. Yep, for the, uh, for the district championship. And, man, what an effort by the Glenmore Wildcats here. I mean, hat tip to them. They battled, did a really good job. Pitchers on the mound, they, they battled, and – and they're aggressive at the plate, and I like watching that as well. Yeah. So um, everybody, hope they have safe travels home. They'll be hosting us on on Thursday. So and hopefully uh, that one will, the wet rain will hold off um, for that one or get out of here for that one. You know, like I said, now now let's get some rain overnight and work on this drought and work on our water table and you know pray that there's nothing severe. Of course, uh, you know comes through. But uh, keep an eye on tomorrow. We're going to take a break here. And when we come back, we'll have Danny with the box score and the stats. And, uh, and you're watching Eagle Baseball on 446 Sports. BK Distributors is proud to support high school athletics on 446 Sports. BK is the one-stop shop for trophies, banners, awards, letter jackets, and just about anything award-related. And now, welcome BK Apparel and BK Promotions to the family. For all your spirit apparel needs and anything you need to brand your business, when you think of anything you need with your name on it, think BK. Check them out on Facebook or at bkdistrib.com. BK Distributors, apparel and promotions in Pineville. 
At Certified Transmission, you can count on our certified mechanics with over 35 years experience to get your vehicle fixed right and get you back on the road. Got transmission problems? Go where you go. Certified Transmission. And welcome back to Eagles Nest here on the campus of Holy Savior Menard for the victorious Menard Eagles 6-4 to four win over the Wildcats. And what's the box score here, Danny? The final box score, Glenn Moore. Wildcats scored four runs on nine hits and had one error, and that was that costly error that cost them two runs there in the sixth. Um, the Eagles had six runs on seven hits and no errors tonight, uh, leading the way for the Eagles, Cooper Scott goes two for three. Ben Wade goes two for four. Cohen, LaRue, Carter Marktel, and Drake Aldridge each had a hit apiece. Um, I, I had the winning pitcher going to Cooper Scott. Michael Henry battled for, uh, for five innings or four innings. Gave up uh, just uh, the one run on five hits, two strikeouts. Cooper comes in but gets the win. But he gave up three runs on four hits um, and two strikeouts. So, good win, good win. Not uh, exactly what we drew up, but we're going to get Coach Marks on here. All right, we're on Eagles postgame show with Coach Jordan Marks, and he brought Ben Wade with him. And yeah, have a seat, young man. There you go. All right, Coach. Talk to us about this one. We knew Glenmore was going to battle. You sure. know, they're, they're, they're a good team, well coached, and, uh, and they, they gave us a fit for a while. Uh, no doubt. Uh, but we, we talked about it as a coaching staff. You know, with senior night, a lot of activities. There could be some distractions. Um, again, I don't think we played our best ball. I think everybody saw that, but the guys never gave up. You know, even when we went down too late, uh, everybody in the dugout, coaches, staff included, had full confidence we were, we were going to pull it through there. So a couple key timely hits, and, and hitting is contagious. I preach it all the time. And, you know, for as soon as – and that's why Cooper's in the leadoff too because when he gets on, man, he can, he can steal bags. He can go first, third. He can score from first. You know, he can do a lot of things. It opens up our offense a lot. And uh, he swiped a bag right there at second and got a, a double from LaRue. And then, like I said, hitting is contagious. Mark and Tell, who hadn't hit all game, drive one up the middle and – uh, you know, just a good win. Yeah. I think we talked about that during the game, uh, you know, how, how we might come out flat, un unfortunately, in a, in a situation where it's senior night. Mm -hmm. I think we had two hits going into the to the sixth. Wow. And uh, But, again, it shows shows the, the, the progress that you made because early in the season you wasn't getting the timely hits um, to, to, to come back because when they scored, like you said, they scored those two runs. Yep. So, so talk about talk about the – Finally getting some timely no, hits. No, and that comes from the past couple weeks. You know, we've been swinging the bat well, so the guys knew deep down they could do it. Uh, it's not like they haven't been in that situation this year. And, you know, that's why we play those, again, play those tough games early and, and for, for late games like this when, you know, you're in a dog fight. So hats off to the guys for battle. Hey, Coach, they go up 4-2. to two. Mm -hmm. You come right back in the bottom of that inning and 4-4. And, four to four. and Cooper looked like a totally different pitcher. From between the two innings. He flipped the switch. Yeah. That's the kind of player he is. Uh, yeah. And we talked about it as a staff man. He said, man, he looks tired. I know he threw nine pitches last night. And throwing on short rest, uh, I think it, we're, we're still a day out from him being able to throw. So he come, had to come in on short rest. But that's just the type of athlete, the type of ball player he is. And, and that's a lot of the guys, not just Cooper. But um, I, I think he flipped the switch there and knew what he needed to do for the team to get it done. Seniors, seniors all got to play and, and they come through come through at the end. Yep. So, he's, you know, it's a, it's a good night. It might not be 
exactly how you drew it up, but it was a good night. Sure. And I, the only thing I challenged him after the game was, I was like, look, don't, don't make it two in a row. You know, yeah. we played sloppy. There's a lot of distractions. I want to see a different ball club yeah. come Thursday. So. Well, let me ask you this. Okay. Cody Lyons. Yep. You know, before we before you hand off the headset to Ben, talk about Cody Lyons. No, Cody's, like I said, he's a team guy. We, we talked about it on Sunday. Uh, you know, he's, he's been a big part of this team and still is a big part of this team, whether he's playing or he's not. So we got got a doctor letter today that said he could DH or play first base if needed. So we decided as a coaching staff to give him the, give him the nod, give him the start. And uh, look, the, the guys, to show you how good teammates they are, they, they came to us, they coach. Coach, if Cody can play, he can play for me, you know. Yeah, the so, Rudy situation, yep, passion down exa- the jersey. That's exactly yeah. right. So that just shows the type of clubhouse we have, and, and I think that's real important as well. And the district championship? I think it's nine done. 9-0. Yes, 9-0. Yep. 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 So, so congratulations that, on that. Yes, Appreciate it. I, mean, that's just want to make sure, I, mean, oh, yeah, I want to make gonna, sure we're, we're going to go undefeated district champs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's not where we want to end. At least we, 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 know that wrap, we know that wraps that up, and, and, and of course, heading into the – Postseason, we want to be hot anyway. So. Absolutely. All right, Coach, we I appreciate, appreciate you, you guys, hand that headset off to your catcher. And uh, in my in my Denzel voice, my man. You know, <laughs> hey, stay hot, man. That's, yes, that was sir. been fun to watch. You seeing the ball pretty well right now, huh? I guess so. I mean, my, I thought my mom said I needed glasses at one point. I was like, <laughs> I think I'm okay. Just a little mental. <laughs> but yeah, I'm seeing it real well. Um, hope to continue it. It's a good time to get hot right now. Going into playoffs uh, real soon. But, yeah, I'm just having fun. Good, good. Yeah, so, I mean, we've always, we've constantly talked about behind the plate, behind the plate and everything. This weather, last night, I know last night was yeah. worse, but but tonight, I mean, what's the, how do you, not only you know, what you do behind the plate, but how do you keep the confidence of the pitcher because of that wet ball? It's real hard. Yeah, what you said, the wet ball, it's, it's really hard to command pitching and call pitching throughout the game because you don't know if that ball's wet or what they're going to do in the next pitch, and we have runners on first and second or something. We hit that guy, we got bases juice. It's just a it's a whole mindset to where I'm thinking, hey, can I maybe get a fastball right here? I can go back pick and get somebody out. Or do we just go fastball out and see them just ground out? But uh, having it wet back there is uh, it's, it's, it's different, very different. We haven't had it all year. It's the first two games I've had to deal with it, but it's a part of it at this point. Yeah, and uh, so you uh, senior night tonight. Yes, sir. You know, congratulations on that 14. You and 13 teammates have, uh, you know, been together like that. How did that, how did, how does the winning the district championship on senior night feel? It feels great. Um, I'm very happy. I've been with all these guys. They really mean a lot to me. And um, they always will be some of my best friends, even as I'm moving away. And um, they're, they're, it's awesome to win something like this, especially district. We've won it every single year. We've been a, part, a bit apart with one another. So. Um, just really happy. Thankful for all of them. Well, congratulations, young man. Good job. If you would keep it Danny. rolling, man. Keep yes, it rolling. sir. Of course. Pass that headset to Coach Turney there. So, hey, good job, young man. So, all right, Coach. Let's exhale, man. I mean, this was this one was a little little challenging, wasn't it? This one was a little <laughs> bit of a nail biter. Uh, a lot closer than we were hoping it for today. But like you said, I mean, these guys have reiterated it, it was. Uh, big distraction with senior night, having 14 of those guys run out there, families. I mean. Minds are elsewhere, especially early in the game, and, and, and we saw that. We played sloppy, but they came so back. Talk a little bit of difference. Uh, you know, we, we like to pick with Mike about his start, and sometimes he, he likes to put pressure on himself. He started well today, but then he, he kind of got in a, got a little funk a little bit, but, but was able to manage through it for a little while. He did, um, and that's the thing that we've been trying to stress with him all year is getting that good start and building on it and he had the good start tonight and his last couple starts hadn't been so good in the first inning but then he as soon as he found some adversity i don't know if you guys could see it from up here but he kind of gets in his head real quick and i yeah. when i went out there and talked to him i told him i was like man put your attitude back in your back yeah. pocket and uh, throw the baseball yeah. okay that's all we need you to do right now yeah and it, once again it's senior night you know it's a this championship possibility so you know all those things come into play let's talk about ben I mean, I, and I'd forgotten. I mean, I know Danny didn't, but I'd forgotten that he calls the, calls the pitches. He is. I haven't heard okay. him call pitching <laughs> two years. You know. and, uh, it's been great to have somebody like that. Is It's invaluable. Okay, Because, mm-hmm. I mean, he handles the pitching staff. He knows what each guy throws. He knows what their tendencies are. He's, he's a student of the game, and he's going he's gonna to be real successful at the next level because of that. Um, but to be able to have him back there and not have to worry about calling every single pitch, it takes so much stress off the coaching staff. Yeah. So my assumption is... They're looking at their phones. My assumption is there must be 
I think they realized they just won the championship. Oh, Bing, oh okay. Bing went back down there and told them. To <laughs> okay, I was fixing to say, well, yeah, um, they, man. Yeah, they're excited about yeah. it. Cooper, Cooper came in last night, threw nine pitches, got out of it, and get the inning real quick. Comes in tonight, I felt like he, he might have got squeezed a little bit, and, and he probably felt like he tried to have to get too much at the plate. I, I think that's what happened in that first inning, but uh, when he came back in the dugout, even when I went back and told him on the mound, I'm like, don't let the umpire take you out of your game. You just got to throw. And it, obviously, he wouldn't have his best stuff tonight. I mean, I, I know it's only nine pitches, and people don't see that's a lot of pitches. Yeah. But, well, you, you got to warm up. and yeah. you, you do, and, and weather like this, it's hard. Um, but he, he battled. He battled. He came out that second inning and just threw yeah. the snot out of it. And, we don't allow him to talk about uh, the opposing pitcher, but uh, the lefty out there, Thrasher. Was Thrasher, Thrasher, yeah. Thrasher he, yeah. he, he kept us off balance. What, what, and that's, <laughs> he's not the first lefty that's done that to us. He's not. It's, we've always had problems with soft guys. Yeah. And, I mean, he probably wouldn't. Bumping 72 maybe on right, the mound. Right. His curveball was probably 58. So, I mean, we, we've we struggled with the slow guys all year. You saw as soon as they put somebody in with velocity, we started turning them yeah. around. Okay. You mean that that we we told them the district champ that they didn't even know it? Is that, that what we're, we're serious about? They may, they may be making a TikTok <laughs> over there or something. You don't never know. I'm wonder, what I was wondering is I'm wondering if somebody in front of us lost. Yeah, you know, I know I there's know. a lot of there's a lot of games being stacked in this week, and that might be one of the things that they're excited about. I did see where – their Pope lost last night, oh, okay. yeah. so so that's so got a little breathing day. room, but still got to go take room, care of business. I mean, we still got what, so we go Thursday. Two games left. We, we go got Thursday, Thursday to Glenmore. Thursday to Glenmore, and then Monday we, got, we go to Buckeye. Uh, we got we're gonna have to probably it's gonna be a pitch staff. by committee. Yeah, Johnny, Johnny whole staff, staff on Thursday. Um, Gavin's probably gonna get the start. He's okay. probably the freshest arm, and I, I think he's gonna do all right. He, okay. he usually steps in and does pretty good for us. But, I mean, if we have to, we got J.D. Shelton coming out of the pen. Okay. we got some other guys that we still got can throw. we still got some arms left. But you're, you're right. It's going to be Johnny Holstein. And then we go Monday to Buckeye. And that's, I mean, that's a game you can probably throw anybody and everybody. Yeah, and, we and, probably will. It'll yeah. probably be Johnny Stahl Holstein yeah. that game, too, because, yeah. I mean, it's the last game of the year. We want to set up our arms for the playoffs sure. when they start. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's getting to be an exciting time. Yes, starting, it is. It's starting to be gut crunching time. Yep. So. Well, Coach, we definitely appreciate you. We appreciate your time. Appreciate you coming up. Appreciate you being at the show the other night. You know, I know you've got a, a, a large family, a growing family. And, uh, I do, I do. And, uh, it's we, fun to get over there. And a, and a full-time job, but we definitely appreciate your time. Uh, we, we, just to let you know, we had uh, Coach Scully and, and Coach Lanny, Lanny up here, and then mm -hmm. we got to talk about your, your, your daughter for some. And, yeah, and, she, and, she's been doing really well this year. I'm really proud of her. I hate that I don't get to see all of her games, well, yeah. but, I mean, she's – from last year to this year, her mental state has been the biggest change because she's always had the physical ability. I just don't think she actually believed in herself, and she's starting to. And she's still got two years left. And it's going to be fun to see yeah, what she does in the next couple of years. Yeah, excellent. Coach Scully and Coach Coach Laney just had nothing but you know good things to say, and, and her her development over the season. Yes, so. yeah, she's she's doing great. So, well, Coach, congratulations on the district championship. Uh, we'll go ahead and end it here yep. for Coach Turney, Danny Clear. I'm Nick McNana. We appreciate you all watching 446 Sports. You all have a good evening, and may the Lord bless you.